Hello friends, welcome to Coding Garden. Uh, I am CJ, and today we're going to build a weather page, a weather overlay. Um, so the plan is to build an overlay that I can put on screen for my IRL streams that will tell the audience what the current temperature is and what the current time is where I'm at. So I also want to make this configurable. So essentially, uh, there'll be a page where you can choose all of your settings, like what font do you want to use? What's the background color? Do you want to use Fahrenheit or Celsius? Uh, do you want 12 hour time or 24 hour time? And then that will generate a link and then other people can use that overlay link as well. Um, so the MVP minimum viable product will be to build uh, uh, with a, a fixed text size, background color, and temperature units. And then once we get that working, we'll make it configurable. Uh, but first, we do have to find a weather API, uh, which I don't, well, we'll have to research. I don't know what exists. And then we're also going to find some weather icons. That, that's going to be icons that map to the weather that we'll actually display. Yeah, and I guess if you want your temperature in Kelvin, you could do that as well. Um, yeah. And then uh, before we do any of that, this is just my reminder that if you're in the USA and you haven't voted yet, you should vote. You absolutely should vote. We'll talk a bit more about that in a second. Um, anyone, if you have any good resources for uh, just information about voting, it, it, the thing is, like, it varies in every state. So I did not uh, I, I don't know of a good general resource for anyone in the USA. Like, I know resources for if you're in Colorado, which is where I'm at. But if anyone knows, I know, like, there's, I found USA.gov, but I don't know if, if there's any good resources on uh, educating people on voting and the issues and stuff like that, um, then uh, uh, let me know. Let me know the website. We'll share it with people. It's, it's, I think it's the midterm elections. I think that's what it's called. I don't know. And thank you for this time. And we'll, we'll look at it in, in a second. Okay. Uh, let's say hi to everyone, and then uh, we'll get into it, and we'll write some code. So if you want to, well, if you want me to say hello to you, you can say hi, hello, hello, hey, yo, cheers, greetings, hi, us up, what's up, morning, afternoon, evening, howdy, good day, coding hiya, or vohio. Say any one of those things, I will acknowledge you. Um, and uh, 23 minutes ago, I was the first person to say hi. So hello, me. What's up, Mark? And hello, Cesar, and Distant Sense, and Timon, and Pop Blip, and Danger Mouse, and Shark Turn Up. Hello, Macaroni Pizza Pie, and Vim Surf, and Veeb, and Indie Subuntu, and FPV. Welcome in for the first time. Glad to have you. What's up, Crypod, and It's Me Delano, and Judge JLo, and Funny Boy, and Excalo, and Vernagi, and Artcore, and Tanner, and Drop Mania. Welcome in, everyone. And Moose, and uh, Itzy. Drop Mania, your name looks awesome. How many, how many months? You're all... That's a cool 7TV paint. I, want, I, want, I, want, I, might, I might use that one. <laughs> Merhaba? What is Merhaba? Is that, uh, what language is that? Uh, and the Timmy, thank you for the 25 months. And uh, Norley, hello, welcome in. Uh, and thank you, Satya. What's up, Let's see. And Sunny, glad to see you all. Uh, we had some supports. Appreciate y'all. Acid Spark with the 31 months. Got to keep me housed. Appreciate that, Acid Spark. <laughs> What's up, Brixius with the 7 months. Thank you. And uh, the Timmy, thank you for that 25 months. Welcome in, Peter, from Germany. Very good, very good. Very good, very good. Uh, and Kaysen, hey, welcome in. Hello, a random Tim. Hi, glad to see you. <laughs> Let's all take this moment to drink some water. Let's all hydrate together. Is this, yeah, it's too, this is like a dark blue. I was going to say it's like, it might be um, see-through or invisible, but it's not. Let's see. Turkish, I see. I see. We I mean, I think we the only thing we have um that's not English. No, we don't have I mean we have good A, but that's like Australian. <laughs> because we keep the chat in English, we try to keep the hellos in English, but you know what? We might change that rule eventually, but and no rally, welcome in. Um yeah, this one's from this is Camelback. It is, yeah. Uh, open Mateo. Is this uh, weather? Wow. Yeah, we'll look at this one, too. And Mr. Workers, well, Whiskers, welcome in. I, I probably, yeah, I definitely could. I, if I tapped into the uh, 7TV API, I could get the, the paints on there, too. We'll do that eventually. That would be good. And Flo, good day. What's up, Imposter Engineer? Um, what is Boga Hey? <laughs> Boga Hey is... 
<laughs> is uh, Kit Boga's emote. It's a uh, uh, Bonzi or Bonsai saying hey. That's why it, it's it's English. <laughs> Uh, and awaited. Thank you very much for that 29 month Risa. But we, we we've got a lot of um, Boga fam that co come over here, so that's why I have Boga Hay on there. And Demurka, hello. Uh, what's up, uh, imposter engineer? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, uh, Merhaba is also hello in Arabic. Oh, didn't know that. I didn't know Turkish and Arabic. I mean, do they does, do Turkish and Arabic share a lot of words? Huh. Oh, huh, and Artcore, thank you for the hydrate. We'll drink, uh, I'm drinking two things. Drinking my, my Yerbas and, and some water today. Good to know, I had I had no idea. Okay, so this is another option for the Weather API. Um, we'll mark that down. But before we talk about that, does anyone, um, does anyone know of a good resource for uh, giving people if they wanna know more about voting? I mean, today is is voting day. Um, that's a thing, um, but if you haven't voted yet, you should do your best to go try and vote. Um, voting and elections. Google, yeah, you could Google it. I'm trying to just, like, I just want to give people, like, a no-nonsense, like, here's here's all the things you, you, you need to know to, to go vote. Because, um, like, there, there are some, uh, some, some, I guess, not, not necessarily misconceptions, but things people might not know. Let's talk about them right now. So... Um, on the ballot, depending it, the ballot is it, it, is different in every every state, and and, and also is slightly different in uh, in counties within that state. Um, but here are some things you should know. Uh, you, if you don't have an opinion on a candidate candidate or issue, you can leave that blank. Uh, the rest of your ballot will still count. So I think this is one of the things that gets a lot of people that's like super intimidating because like I, I just turned I turned in my ballot yesterday and uh, it was five pages. Uh, the first two pages were candidates and judges and then the rest of them were propositions and amendments for for Colorado and in my case for Denver Denver law. But each one of those propositions and amendments I spent at least 10 minutes reading about and like forming a decision about but i realized that if you haven't voted yet and you haven't done the research yet it can seem really daunting to to vote on those things but uh if you don't know how you want to vote on that thing you literally can leave it blank um and just vote on the things that you do know about or the things that you do care about so that's one thing as well um uh how do you find your find your ballot for res um Oh, I guess, yeah, that's the other thing. So it depends on the country and the state that you're in, but I'll, I'll use Denver as an example because that's where I'm at. So if I, search, I just search the web for Denver, Colorado uh, ballot, um, the Ballotopedia is a really, really good website. Um, they have, I they have most, actually, this is probably one of the best resources because they have uh, most states, if not all of them on here and the, and the issues that you're going to be voting for. Um, and they try to write things out in in uh, plain English as well. Yeah, because that's the other tricky and daunting part about a ballot is like you look at it and it's like I I don't even understand it on first read. But Ballotopedia does a really good job of breaking down if you vote yes, this is what you're voting for. If you vote no, this is what you're voting for. And then also um, on the page that lists all of the info, they show the proponents for it and the and the uh, arguments against it. So you can see what organizations have put money in to, to make sure that this thing gets passed, or what organizations have put money in to make sure it doesn't get passed. But that's how you can you can form. Uh, uh, thank you for that, Matt. That's how you can form your opinions. How to vote in every state. Wow, this is great. Yeah, this is an awesome resource as well. Thank you for this. Um, so. Check it out on YouTube. Check out Ballotopedia. Just search for your um, your city and your state, and you should find some stuff on Ballotopedia. But literally every one of these are things that I voted on uh, for for uh, this specific ballot. Yeah. The um, and there's a My Vote app. Let's check that out too. And then uh, Acid Spark mentioned Vote411.org. Um. Check it out. You vote, is this it? 
I don't know if this is it. I don't know if that's it. <laughs> but, uh, vote four one one. This looks good too. Um, check that out, and then also uh, Balladopedia. Oh, thank you, Rayla. Appreciate that. Um, but honestly, use Google, use DuckDuckGo, figure out the stuff. Um, but pretty much every county, every city will have a, a website that tells you all of the ballots or all of the issues and candidates that are going to be on the ballots. So you actually can do research before you go to the polls. Um, that's that's a thing as well. Is there anything else I wanted to say about this? I guess let's take a quick break. Yeah, no, no worries, Jen. I, I didn't know this until yesterday when I was filling out my ballot because I was like, I don't want to vote on this. Like for, for one, like the thing didn't affect me. And also like it, it didn't have a, a, it had no effect on me, no good effect, no bad effect. Because uh, there are certain things like when, the, when there are like tax increases and stuff like that, if you don't make a certain income, that tax increase is not going to affect you at all. So, I mean, typically, if it's not going to affect you, a lot of people would vote for it because they're like, oh, well, it's not going to affect me. Sure, let's vote for it. This wasn't a tax issue. I forget one of the, the issues, but I was like, I don't want to vote on this. And I looked it up and it was like, yes, you can just leave it blank. So that's that's a that's a thing that I think will help with a lot of people that have anxiety about like all the issues on there. And I think the other thing is like going to the um, going to a physical place to vote today can be really intimidating as well because you get in the booth and there's like six pages and you want I guess you don't want to be in there forever. So you're doing your best. But just know you can leave stuff blank. Um, I guess the other thing is uh, just just please vote. <laughs> I, I saw some, uh, there was a post on r slash Denver, which is the city that I live in. And it just showed the turnout percentages for the various age groups. And they are so low. Like, I don't know how accurate that information, like, I think it, that was based on like early voting. The, in, the numbers are going to increase based on like the turnout today. But like for a lot of age groups under 50, the turnout was like 10% or less. And so um, if I reach like two people right now, that's good enough for me. So please, if you live in the US, uh, go vote. Um, yeah, and I guess the other thing is, um, I don't know if your your work is legal, legally required to let you off of work to go vote, but most workplaces um, are know that if like, or will, will give you time off. Like they're like, oh, you need to go vote? Take it. And then just come back when you're done. Yeah. So I don't. I did not vote for for president in this in this election. This was all about um, uh, the house, the house, the Senate. I don't. Know. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I mean, it it, it it was not for it was not for president though. Yeah. Only Cali requires people to get time. Yeah. So depending on the state you live in, you may not be able to take off of work but but do your best i guess the other the other like thing another misconception is like if you are in line um before closing you can still vote there might be people um that will uh basic basically what they'll do and this actually happened to me several years ago when because i didn't do the mail-in voting i just went in person but um i was in line and the place closed. The, the the polling people came out and they basically marked where the line ended so no one knew could get in line, but everybody that was already in line was able to vote. So if you have to go late, you have to go after work, if you're there before the polls close, you can still vote. No, like you will not get turned away if you are in line to vote. Um, now there's been a lot of like news and stuff about like voter int intimidation and like uh, you, you might think that you might not be safe if you're in a polling line and stuff like that, but a lot of that, is propaganda a lot of that is like l like little events that have happened in a few places not everywhere and then now people are spreading it like it's it's basically a war zone out there most likely you're going to be fairly safe if you're standing in line to vote so and thank you one computer guy thank you for that tier three did i miss anything else midterm turnout is always lower unfortunately yeah it's cr it's crazy though because it's like yeah, it's, it's crazy. It's crazy. <laughs> it's, it's like the people that vote decide the elections. Now, obviously, that's like a, a common sense thing to say, but it's like the fact that like 80 percent of certain demographics are not voting means that the 10 percent are deciding for the rest. So, yeah. Yeah, I know there are certain countries where it is a holiday. Yeah. Almost all states require the time. That's good to know. Um, 
so last thing I'll talk about, which I mean, I don't I don't want to get political. Obviously, I'm, I'm, I'm abstaining from any sort of political opinion. I just want you to vote regardless of 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 what your political leaning is. Um, but uh, the in, in Colorado specifically, every single voter gets a mail in ballot. Um, and that's a really cool thing, because like I was literally able to sit on the couch. I actually filled out my ballot. Uh, two days ago, but I turned it in yesterday. But so two days ago, my partner and I sat on the couch for an hour and we literally researched every single issue together. We decided how we were going to vote separately, but um, at least Denver County makes uh, uh, consumable YouTube videos for every single ballot issue. It talks about like uh, what the what the issue is for and then what the proponents say, what the, the people against it say. Um, and we were able to just sit there and do our research and then fill out our ballot. And then um, yesterday my partner went and dropped it off. Um, and that's kind of amazing because it, it, it reduces a lot of the stress of like having to take off of work, having to go to the place to do the thing. Um, so I really like that. It's a cool thing. <laughs> we, we have, yeah, it's, it's crazy. It's crazy that like, oh, it's not required in the US, but yeah, welcome in one computer guy. It's not a good idea for all countries to leave the ballot blank. If there is a risk of electoral flawed, fraud, it's better to spoil a ballot marking all options. Otherwise, blank ballot may be used to set vote for a corrupted party. Oh, sure. I could see that. I could see that. But um, in, in, in the U.S., um, they're, they're very strict about like how they tally the ballots. And, and the ballots are electronic, so they get fed through a machine. I, I see what you're saying, though. It's possible that if you leave it blank, someone could come in and fill it, fill it in afterwards. But I would not worry about that. Uh, because there's a lot of security around like counting and processing the ballots. So, yeah. And welcome in, Razorson. Ryan says, I'm not voting, but I think that's because they're in Canada. I think that's not. Yeah, yeah, exactly, because I'm a Canadian. <laughs> Why is it so low there? I think it, it really is just um, uh, lack of information. Um, there's a lot of myths, there's a lot of misconceptions. Um, so, yeah. Go vote, go vote. <laughs> You've only ever known mail-in ballots, so it's great. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, I don't. It's not, uh, marijuana is not legal at the federal level, but it, it is legal at, in a lot of at the state level in a lot of states. No voting because you're Swiss, and that's okay. If you're not a U.S. citizen, you get a pass. But if you are a U.S. U.S. citizen, especially if you're young, if you're like 18, 19, 20 years old, and you're watching this, please go vote. Just just take the time and do it, um, and make it a habit. And then also, if you are uh, a grown-up and you have kids, you should vote to set a good example for your kids. Um, yeah, but voting was like never a, like a really big topic in my house when I was growing up. I honestly, I think the first time I voted, I was, I think I was 26 years old, um, which is really sad, right? Like I should, I should have been voting since I was legal age, but yeah. Okay. And if you're seeing an ad, we're just going to keep talking about voting then. Um, I think there, was there another thing I wanted to talk about? It's not coding related. Um. Yeah, and, and I'm still 26 to this day. <laughs> um. Yeah, I guess that's it. Just go vote. Go vote right now. Right now. Yeah. Okay. We'll talk about uh, how to how to customize your chat patches. That's all I wanted to say. Please go vote, and then also try to persuade other people to go vote as well. Um. There it is. So if you want to set a team badge, so let's see what mine is. My team badge is a bucket. <laughs> and uh, SQL Gorgester's team badge is a tractor. Asset Spark has GitHub. Um, and that makes sense, Asset Spark. I, I think that's typically it. Like if there's something, um, if there's a really important issue, especially right when you turn voting age, you, you probably are more likely to start voting then. Um, but yeah, but it's always important issues. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, timon has got the Discord. Automagic has Node.js. Um, and then you can also see that people have um, uh, flags for a specific province. Uh, you can see that uh, Ryan has BC, uh, British Columbia. Uh, Valk has uh, DK. Wait, no, nobody tell me. I can figure this out. Denmark. It's Denmark. <laughs> Actually, I cheated. It, it, it showed up right there. It's Denmark. Um, and welcome in for for each. Welcome in. And Moshiko has uh, the uh, Israel flag. Welcome in, Chief Mustardo. Um, okay. Uh, yeah, and then Dropmania has what is that? It is a province in Germany. 
I don't know what it is, RP, uh, but they also have this vote logo. So you too can set all of this stuff. Uh, if you do exclamation mark flag, you can do your two character country code. If you want to set it as a province or as a city, um, you'll have to check out this repo over here. It's the flags repo on the coding garden GitHub. Um, basically, if you go into this folder, if you see that these are all the top level countries here, the, every, every country that's in the ISO 133 or whatever the number is standard. Let me get the right number right. ISO 3166, <laughs> whatever in the ISO 3166 standard, your country flag is here. But then we also have folders. So for instance, I live in the US. So if I go into the US folder, um, I can see all of the states. There's individual state flags. And then I also can go into an individual state and then we have like city flags. So um, I do believe I have mine set to uh, Denver, Denver, Colorado. No, I have it to us, but if I wanted to set it to Denver, I would use the path here. So, um, if I do exclamation mark flag, us, Colorado, Denver, it will find that. And now I get this really cool, uh, sun over the mountains, Denver flag. Oh yeah. And I'll, I need to update the command, but, um, this is the repo where you can you can see there. And if your flag doesn't exist, make a pull request. So um, a lot of people have actually gone through and add all of their province flags. So Mr. American Mike made the pull request to add all of the flags for Argentina. Um, and uh, someone also did it for a lot of the Canadian provinces. So if you don't see yours here, you can make a pull request and, and we'll add it. Cool. Oh, yeah. And you can set your team, too. So... Uh, if, if and when you go here, uh, you can pick from any one of these brands or icons, <laughs> or you can pick a weird flag. I mean, not that Nepal is weird, just the flag is not a traditional shape, uh, which is kind of hilarious to me, but <laughs> you, can, you can set that too. Um, but if you want to set your team badge, you can pick from this page, and then you can also pick from uh, simple icons. Um, let me pick one. Somerset? Is this Somerset? Huh. Huh. Well, my noble country flag show. Yeah. I mean, it, as long as you set it to the UK flag. <laughs> nice. Where's the Dominican Republic flag? Um, I think it's at the top level. I think, uh, what's the country abbreviation for Dominican Republic? I think it's just DR. Um, let's see. Mm, we'd have to look at the ISO 3166 standard and see if Dominican Republic is on there. Because if they're not, then um, uh, it might need to be added. Um, Dominica? Dominica, DO. DO. So if we look in here for DO, we got it. We got you four for each. There it is. Uh, yeah, so exclamation mark flag D-O should, should set it for you. And if you want to look up your country code, you can find it on this page. Yeah. Oh, what do you got? Eating manatee. Taiwan. Very cool. Very cool. Okay. Um, I'm going to find an icon to set in my, in the chat. Nice. Is that the Houston flag? Nice. Nice. <laughs> Yeah, what do you got, null set? New York! Oh, that's the literal New York flag. Cool. I, didn't, I didn't even know we had that. Wait, like, not... Yeah, New York State. Right? Right? Yeah, yeah. Cool, 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 cool. All right. I'm going to set my icon to Apple. So, in the chat, I can do exclamation mark team. And then Apple. Um, and... Uh, now my team icon is uh, that. So this is the New York City flag. Um, cool, 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 cool. Oh, because it's new NY slash New York, so it's New York City. That makes sense. Uh, yeah, and, and honestly, I can disable slow mode while, while people are figuring this out. Um, but be nice. Don't spam the chat. Don't spam the chat. <laughs> set your flag, set your team. In, uh, in five minutes' time, I'm going to turn slow mode back on. Um, yeah, you updated the Bavarian flag, didn't you? 
Morocco. Nice. This is fun. It's so fun to see all the people from around the world. Which also, like, I was hesitant to even talk about voting today because my audience is like 13% USA. <laughs> Everyone else is from everywhere else in the world. But still, of that 13%, I hope I convinced at least one person to vote today that hasn't. Go over the teams. Yeah. Um, so click this link, the Font Awesome page. Um, and there you can you can search. And then also there's simple icons. So you can pick from one of these two. Yeah, I'll, I'll actually, I'll have to pull up my my uh, Twitch stats. On YouTube, I'm only, it's only like 23% USA. It might even be lower than that. Uh, but yeah, honestly, let me just show you my, twi my Twitch analytics. Um, yeah, almost everyone has a different flag. Yeah, and that is just like, they may not necessarily be from... Um, uh, that country, but they're at least setting it as that country, which is good. Okay, okay, we're at 16... So for the past 30 days, 16% of my audience is United States. Um, let's see if there's anything else I can't show on the stream. On the, I think I can show this. So, um, over the past 30 days, I've got... 56,000 unique views, and 16% is from the U.S. 11% is from Germany. We've got a lot of people from Germany. I think we have quite a few mods on the mods team that are from Germany, too. But, uh, yeah. We are we are worldwide here on the Coding Garden. <laughs> um, it's also super interesting to see how many people click on the go-live notifications. This isn't updated for today, but... Um, so I have how many followers? I have almost 55,000 followers, and Twitch is sending a notification to 40% of them. That's like over 20,000 notifications sent, and only 100 people clicked on them. <laughs> it's, it's baffling to me. It's crazy. Uh, I actually don't know, Cheese Hunter. I, I would guess it's based on by view. It's based on viewing IP. Um, oh, thank you, Sherkim. It's a. <laughs> I need to get a real haircut. Time of day does matter. Yeah, it's true. I mean, I think especially since I do these morning streams that like a lot of people in the U.S. are at work. So you get the notification and never click on it. Well, that's okay. Yeah. It's true, check. But you just saying that feels even worse because it's like, what am I doing wrong? Like they're telling people I'm here and nobody's clicking on it. I don't know. Yeah, I think that's the thing. Like um, I... Um, I actually disabled push notifications, so I wouldn't be counted in that 40% metric if I was a Coding Garden follower. I don't know. Yeah, I think that that's exactly it, Jen. Like, you get people get so many notifications that they see it, and then they just swipe it away, or they don't even notice it. Yeah. I, 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 I used to have that problem, but now I've, I've really gotten on top of my notifications. Especially, like, my emails and stuff, because I unsubscribe from a bunch of mailing lists, so now most of the emails I get are, like relevant and somewhat important so but yeah if you go to this page you'll see any one of these brands you can choose the slug and then set that as your team same thing with the other one that's good to know squidos because yeah i mean i mean we're it's, time flies <laughs> we're 43 minutes in there are roughly 260 people here so yeah i know there's a lot of people that uh, clicked the link in the email, clicked on discord, clicked on twitter or they just went directly here because they knew i was going to be live so, I get it. Yeah, I believe it, uh, Zilla here, is like, if, if you have every single notification on your wrist and you haven't filtered them, that can get really annoying. Uh, I don't know Chai Coder. I think it has a lot to do with um, also, like, my following and, and really my value to Twitch in terms of, like, how much money am I actually bringing Twitch? Because... For Twitch to send over 20,000 push notifications, that costs money. That's like server time. That's like whatever push notification service they're using. That costs money. So uh, they probably prioritize push notifications for larger streamers, streamers that are actually bringing money into the platform. So I would guess that that's the, the biggest weight. Honestly, I, I don't know. Like, I don't have any insight, but that's what I would guess. Um, and then probably, uh, depending on if it costs more or less for a given location, I don't know. Yeah. I appreciate that, Ryan. Thanks for being here. 
just saw the discord notification yeah my <laughs> my partner the, like this was probably like a month ago but like she she came up to me it was like in the evening and she was like did you just go live and i was like i was live this morning she literally got a discord notification like eight hours late yeah um oh the countdown was for when i would turn slow mode back on <laughs> thanks for reminding me yeah well, thank you, Murdoch. <laughs> Murdoch's like, I gotta be there. I gotta be there. Oh, good. congrats, Chief Mustardo. That's that's great. It's always fun to get some new new PC parts. Yeah, and welcome in, Dark Coder. Glad to have you. I I wanna I wanna work on GitHub. I, I wanna do GitHub Action stuff. I just haven't gotten around to it. Yeah, I don't think they get AWS for free. They definitely probably get like an internal business to business discount of sorts, or like basically. It, they're get, potentially getting it at cost, but it, because it's a different, I don't know. I have no, I have no idea. All I'm doing is guessing and speculating, but like, because it's a different business unit, they probably charge them a little bit because then they can still make profit in the other business unit. Like they're still technically different business units. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. And welcome in uh, Yeltra. Do I have any recommendations for some good open source, rich text editors for react? There was one that I used. I forget what it's called, though. But what I would do to find it is uh, what you see is what you get. WYSIWYG. WYSIWYG React component. Um, let's see if... Oh, yeah, I use Quill. I use Quill. That's the one I used in the past. Um, worked, worked well enough for what I was doing. I don't know if it's still the best or if it's still updated. Let's take a look. Um... It's updated it's published three months ago um it has three hundred seventy six thousand weekly downloads so um yeah quill i think is the underlying library and react quill is is built on top of that so yeah quill is the um it, it works with a lot of different frameworks so this is the one that i know of um but yeah again i would just search search the web for WYSIWYG. <laughs> what you see is what you get uh, and also, we'll make that the word of the day. Today's word of the day is WYSIWYG. What you see is what you get. This is a common term used in uh, programming and coding to talk about uh, like interactive editors. Like Microsoft Word or Google Docs is a WYSIWYG editor. Uh, and Pablo, thank you for the, the two years. Eh, 24 months, that's awesome. Um, and I don't know if I missed it, but awaited. Thank you for the 29 months. I have never used Monaco. Um, or have I? Yeah, Monaco is the code editor, isn't it? I think it's a little bit different. Let's look at DraftJS. I mean, DraftJS has three times the weekly downloads of uh, Quill. However, it was last updated two years ago. So, yeah, that's what I was like. That's not very updated. <laughs> um,. Yeah, Monaco, I do believe, is a is a code editor, not necessarily a, a WYSIWYG editor. Cool. All right. Um, let's 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 lose, let's write some code. Let's do some research. So, I'll mention it one more time. If you're in the U.S. and uh, you haven't voted, please go vote today. Let it be known that um, if you don't have an opinion or don't understand a specific ballot issue, you can leave it blank. Um, uh, someone mentioned earlier that leaving things blank has the potential for fraud because somebody could go fill in your thing. Everywhere that's collecting uh, ballots in the U.S. is secure, and you don't have to worry about that. So, um, just go vote. Don't let the the daunting idea of so many issues steer you away, away from voting. Also, if you have to work today and you can't get to the vote to the polls until really late, if you're in line before the polls close, you will be able to vote. And don't let anyone tell you otherwise. That's a thing. And also, if you want to research your ballot issues, go to ballotpedia.org or check out How to Vote in Every State on YouTube or vote411.org. All of these are really great resources that talk about the, the ballot issues that you're going to see when you go to the polls. So please, 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 please vote today. There you go. In my country, to cancel a vote, you vote for multiple candidates. Honestly, I didn't think about that. Do that, too. <laughs> like if, if you're worried about leaving something blank, uh, having potential for fraud and somebody filling it in for you, literally vote for um, all of them. And that would work. So what I what I read read yesterday was at least the electronic ballots that that I was filling out. Um, if a given issue wasn't filled out correctly, only that issue is thrown out. The rest of your ballot still counts. So. 
Yeah, and thank you for that, Codex. So uh, based on the state that you live in, there might be a law that says um, you have to, you, you are legally required to get off of work to go vote. And look at this. All of these blue states, I mean, I don't think blue has anything to do with Democrat versus Republican, but all the states that are the color blue um, have a law that says your employer is, is required to give you time off to go vote. So that's a thing as well. Okay. Let's talk weather. Um, if you know, uh, and welcome in, Statney. Yeah. <laughs> What's up, uh, Ilku? Uh, if anyone knows of a weather API, throw it in the chat and we'll research it. We, I want to find one that um, ha doesn't have too bad of rate limiting, is available for free, um, and would allow me to put the, cl the API key within my client side code. I don't want anything that would typically cost cost money so we got open weather map um that's cool we got that one and then someone mentioned open mateo.com as well i did not know that ryan but that's really funny uh i'm i'm careful with dark sky because they got acquired by apple and i think apple is shutting down their api yeah, support for the Dark Sky, Dark Sky API will end on March 31st. Dark Sky was like one of the best like weather websites, but they got acquired by Apple. So, uh, yeah, yeah, it's tricky. I mean, basically now after the all of the transition happens, all of the weather based stuff from Apple, it will now be Dark Sky. But it's almost like they're locking it into the Apple Apple ecosystem. Uh, API.met.no. Let's check it out. Is there a Yahoo weather API? You didn't miss much, Fob. Right now, we're just getting started. We're researching weather APIs um, to figure out which one we're going to talk to. Open Mateo is used by Tabliss. Oh. Oh. Okay. Underscore dot de. <laughs> I, I'm not going to click on it, Ryan, but that's really funny. So Canada burned down the White House <laughs> at one point in, in the history. <laughs> Um, I, yeah, I don't know, uh, Codex. Let's see. It's not even listed here. Then maybe they shut it down. I used to be a banker, but I lost interest. Why did the chicken get a penalty? For foul play. Okay. Uh, this is cool. <laughs> where's, the, where's the API docs? It's a German weather site, yeah. Um, yeah, weather.gov could work. I guess, like, the main issue there is, um, um, honestly, though, we could host this on Versal and have, like, a little serverless function that makes the API request for us. I think that's what we'll do. We'll, we'll do that. Let's do that. And then I guess we could use Next, because that works really well with Versal. So we'll do that, too. Okay. Um, first of all, I'm going to look at Open Mateo, because I've never heard of it, but on the surface, it looks nice. I can consume this data. Let's look at the docs. Um, oh, well, I, <laughs> I'm building a specific thing. This isn't just as like an instructional thing on how to talk to an API. I am, and I guess I'll talk about that for a second. Uh, and welcome in Code Then Cake. Thank you for the 18 months. So uh, I have been live streaming over on my personal account, uh, W3CJ. And I've been doing what are known as IRL or in real life streams. So for instance, yesterday, um, I was walking around a park in Denver, um, and it's just a whole lot of beautiful nature, and uh, people are, are very often curious about, like, what is the weather like where I'm at, and I want to make an overlay for this stream that will pop up on a certain interval to say, like, what the current weather is, uh, and also what the current time is, because people are curious about that as well. Uh, also, you can see my bot working, so <laughs> whenever... <laughs> Uh, I think especially being further away from, like, civilization, um, I, I do get, like, bad signal. But you can see my bot. It detects weak signal, and then it, like, sends messages. Um, and then also, um, this park was actually really close to uh, just, like, some shops and stuff. So I did some walking around uh, in shops. And then what was really cool yesterday is I was walking past an art gallery, and, like, I was just, like, I... Um, I, I liked the art that I saw. Oh, well, that's a spoiler. Basically, I was looking at the art 
um, through the window. And then uh, the lady that was inside, this lady, she was like, I, I thought they were closed because she was like working on it. And um, but I was like, oh, look at this stained glass. It's super cool. And then like I started walking away and she was like, hey, you, you want to come inside? And I was like, yeah, yeah. Is like, Can I just walk around? She's like, come on in. So we got some cool close up pictures of uh, uh, the these stained glass and then also these ac acrylic on canvas paintings, which is fun. So I use a, I use a gimbal for uh streaming and then i have my phone on it so my phone is sitting on the gimbal um so it's a combination of electronic image stabilization and then the actual gimbal as well um not that irl irl setup there it is um this is the gimbal that i use it's it's a inexpensive one it works well enough for what i need um i think if i upgrade i will probably find a uh, a lighter one. It's not too heavy, but they make some that are really compact now, and uh, uh, it, it would be easier to carry around all day because I'm I'm literally holding holding the gimbal as I go. Um, anything else I want to show? I almost got hit by a car. You can't you can't see it on the uh, on the stream because I just keep walking, but uh, I was very perturbed. <laughs> Actually, it was right before this. And also, so, some rando yelled at me. Uh, no, this is before, was before this. Yeah, right here. Okay, so that guy crossed. Here I am crossing. You see this car? Okay, so that car goes. The cars just keep coming. I'm like, I'm a pedestrian. I have a flashing light. I can be walking right now. And, and the dude almost hit me. So, yeah, that was a thing. Okay, but <laughs> that's my IRL stream, and uh, that's why I'm building this thing. Is I'm building a, an overlay that's going to show the current weather, and we've got an ad. Um, so let's just pause. Oh wait, no, we don't have an ad. An ad will start in four minutes. All right, we have four minutes to pick pick an API then. Um, so what we're going to do for the the initial one is we'll just have a page where you pass in the zip code. Um, or like an address and it will just show you the weather statically for that. That's that's all I really need at like for most of the streams Eventually We'll make it so that the um, Overlay will update given our location, but for now, it's literally just gonna be what is the weather in Denver? Um, in the future, we'll make it so that it'll it'll update in real time. That's the plan anyways yeah, and then and then that's the other thing. Like, I, I, I want to be careful about precise location, but eventually we're going to build a Grand Theft Auto style like map overlay. So, uh, I mean, if you've ever played Grand Theft Auto, um, basically it's just like a little mini map. But that would be really cool to see as well. You could like see my heading, and like just a small version of uh, of the map. Um, I, I ate an overpriced sandwich at Whole Foods too. Um, but yeah, like imagine like there's a little overlay over here. That's like a little circle map with, uh, my location. That'd be cool too. Okay. Well, it depends on the part of town you're in because there are certain parts of town that do have like electric scooters everywhere, but yeah. Yeah. Map box later. Haven't heard of that. All right. Uh, what does it take to call this API? Do I need an API key? Um, apparently I don't. Do I need a latitude longitude or can I just specify a city? Um, no API key and free. This, this is the number one contender for sure. I don't know like how... Let's compare, um, let me figure out what my, um, uh, what my latitude longitude is. I don't know why it put me in Japan. Uh, that's funny. Maybe that was the last thing I was looking at while I was there. But for instance, yesterday I was, um, over here, right here. So what, what is that? This.
My exact latitude longitude? No, but that's the thing. We'll just like pick city center or something like that. So this is longitude. Oh, you can you can get an hourly forecast too. That's pretty cool. Okay. Um I see. So how do I read this API? <laughs> um, you have the time and then the temperature. Okay, so we want, and I guess this is UTC time, so we'd have to convert it. Um, but this is like the expected temperature. And then if we look at 132 in this array, that would be the corresponding temperature for that time. So negative 1.6 Celsius, that's cold. Here, this seems like it's like the middle of the day, I guess. Uh, check the params, okay. Uh, I guess I don't want hourly weather, I want daily weather. Minimum and maximum temperature, sunrise and sunset. Um, yeah. And then, oh, I can set the settings too. Current weather with temperature, winds. this is honestly, this is what I want, current weather. Um, and then I, I could actually tell it that I want Fahrenheit. Uh, put this in America, Denver time code there. This is it. This is, we're, we're on, we're on the way. And then do like uh, miles per hour, inches, basically just ruin all of the units. <laughs> um, Freedom units, yeah. But um, the URL with all the params, okay, there we go. So now it, now it has all the params and we can see that right now it is 60 degrees at that latitude longitude. So um, let's actually compare that with like dark sky, which is what I use all the time. Or if I just do like weather, uh, Lakewood, Colorado, which is the city that that is in, it says it's 66 degrees on dark sky, 67. Um, Well, it's like seven degrees off. That doesn't that doesn't seem that doesn't seem good. Um, I guess that was thirty minutes ago. Did we have a seven seven degree increase in thirty minutes? I, I I'm not here to argue about metric or uh, freedom units, <laughs> but um, it's what I grew up with and it's all I know. So at least for now. Um, curious yeah my plan is to uh basically animate between both right so for the overlay i'm going to show um fahrenheit and then like after five seconds it'll swap to celsius and then every minute or every few minutes it'll show the current time yeah um this is the only thing i'm worried about th that the okay we're actually we're in an ad but um, the only thing I'm worried about is the fact that this is not comparable to dark sky. I guess I could look at weather underground. Yeah, I want it to happen too. It makes a lot more sense, especially for calculations. Um, yeah, this is 67. Maybe this just doesn't update as often. Man, I really wanted to use this API, but it does not look like it's it's updated, which we really need. Okay, so, well, that one's on the back burner. I guess the next um, best option might be, um, did we not have open weather? This one, open weather map. Let's look at open weather map now. Yeah, and I don't want a web scrape. I want something that's um, good to go, okay. Look at their API. Make one API call, receive all essential weather data in one response. Minute forecast, daily forecast. You know what? 
I think I signed up for an API key here a long time. It took a while before I could even get an API key. A thousand requests per 20 hour, for 24 hours for free? Yeah. Uh, what's, what is this Heroku app? Like, what is it based off of? Honestly, like the fact that they don't have their own domain, <laughs> it makes me think that they're scraping. Like, wh wh where are they getting this information from? Yeah, if it takes 24 hours to produce a key, that's going to be like a non-starter. However, I could go search my email and try to find the key that I got a long time ago. I haven't looked at this one either, uh, either. but that's that's where we're, right now we're in the mode of trying to find a, a good one. This this seems like it would work for us. Just uh, just we need an API key, and I don't know how fast we can get it. Um, all right, this is uh, a site from Norway. Um, do they have other countries <laughs> like USA? Um, hmm. And then this site looks cool, but I, I didn't see the API. Um, there is an api.weather.gov that just worked right away. Okay. Show me the documentation. Open data, free to use. But how? Examples. How do I get the forecast? Forecasts are divided into 2.5 kilometer grids. If you don't know the grid, you can pass in latitude, longitude. Great. Um, so this is our latitude. And this is our longitude. Yeah, it's pretty crazy, huh, Ryan? I mean, I, I thought, like... Dark Sky was for the longest time, but the fact that they got acquired by Apple, I mean, that's that's that goes to show that, yeah, they were really good. This was so good that Apple wanted to put it behind a paywall. Um, okay. Coordinates, grid X, grid Y. Where's the temperature? <laughs> we're still, I might have to pass in something else to get the to get the current temperature. Um, oh, here we go. Forecast. So I, if, if somebody gives me a latitude longitude, I need to make the request here and then I can make a request here to get the forecast. Um, so from 11 to 1800 70 degrees from 1800 to 6 38 degrees this is like averages is there any way to get the current weather observation stations Well, forecast hourly. Uh, I think that's what I clicked on before. Um, well, no, I guess I just clicked on forecast. This is just forecast. This is forecast hourly. And an unexpected problem has occurred. Dang it. Oh, here it is. Okay. Um, yeah, that's what I want then. Yeah, good call, d default GN, because this is from 11 to noon, 65 degrees. From noon to 1, 66 degrees. This is the one. So let's make some notes. I'm, I'm just going to use weather.gov. It's free. Um, the only issue is, like, it only works for the U.S., I think. Like, I don't think they have weather for other parts of the world because it is a .gov. Um... Yeah, that's what that's what I'm saying, Valk, is like, I'm going to choose this, but it only works for the U.S. 
And then this is met. No. Oh, so this is the one I was asking, like, do do they even have <laughs> like U.S. weather? Next one hours, precipitation amount, instant air temperature would be 18. 18 C to F. 64. <laughs> Met.no looks good. Yeah, I guess that's the other thing. That's, an, that's another thing we want to do eventually is um, I'll have all kinds of, oh, sorry. <laughs> I'll have all kinds of sensors, so we'll be able to get my heart rate the number of steps I've taken. We could probably get like my body temperature and overlay that on the screen. Um, this looks great. Let's go with it because we can pass in latitude longitude. Um, the meteorologic, meteor, meteorol, meteorologic, meteorolo, meteorologi, meteorological, meteorological. Um, this is the one we're going to go with this. Um, and they honestly like to get the U S weather, they're probably talking to like all of the national ones that are available. This will give me a more simple response. Oh, well the issue with open Mateo is, uh, we just, we, we figured out that it's not up to date for whatever reason. Like, see, it's telling us 60 degrees when it's actually like 66. I was okay with this one telling me that it's 64 because that's like the weather for the hour. Meteor, meteorological, meteor, meteorological. <laughs> Thank you, recent online. Well, we'll look at these docs. Meteor, meteorological. Open weather map API keys are instant. Well, the fact that I even need an API key makes me not want to use it. We're going to use this one from Norway. I think that's what we've settled on. Or have we? Um, no, I'm going to go with this. So here, here's the other thing. Like, if I'm going to make this something hosted that other people can use, I don't really want to use an API key because then at that point, um, once lots of people start using it, it'll get rate limited. I'll have to increase the amount of usage. Something that doesn't require an API key is really great because anybody that uses it is not going to run into that issue. Um, we could see, do they support uh, cores? And uh, we can see that they do. So the fact that their response has this access control allow origin star on it means that I can call this from a front end. No problem. No problem. So thank you to api.met.no. Weather DBI. Oh, I looked at it, but it, it had a Heroku domain. It did not, it did not, um, it didn't look official. Yeah, we looked at this one, but it does require, uh, there's an API key. Um, so <laughs> it's not official. <laughs> That's what, all I'm worried about is it shutting down at some point. All right. I'll look at weather stack. I don't know if there's any others people suggested, but you're probably yelling at your at your TV screen right now. I'm going to go with the Norway one. <laughs> I'm going to go with Norway. Um, weather stack looks cool. You still need an access key, though. What is this Twitch clip time? Meteorological. Mineral, mineral, mineral <laughs> well, I was trying to say it in English. I wasn't even... Meteorologist. Institute. See, I can speak <laughs> Nor Norwegian. Uh, yeah, yeah, and, and that's what I was thinking, Ryan, is like, I mean, we, we could build our own um, scraper if we really wanted to, but I want something that is going to last and is official. So we've, we've, we've settled it. We're going to use this API. Let's start writing some code. Now, my initial thought was, I wanted to use Next.js and I wanted to use uh, Vercel as like uh, serverless functions to call this. But the fact that this API supports cores and the fact that I don't need an API key, I'm going to build a completely client side app. No, no server side rendering. Um, and because we want to do animations, we want to do like fade in, we want to do like s stuff like that. I think I want to go with Svelte because Svelte has like transition 
animations like uh fairly well and built in yeah we're gonna use felt so like yeah the fact that that can do that thing deleting it makes it shrink um and how did they do it i mean it's a lot of code but Uh, those will be separate overlays in line modes. Yeah, this is going to be a standalone weather overlay. And then those will be separate, which potentially could mean that they're server-side rendered or use API keys, I think, anyways. I've never used Turbo Le Repo, but I've, used, but I've seen it. Yeah, nice try. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, all of the overlays that I have here are technically separate. So, like, the drop game is separate from uh, the chat overlay which is separate from, what are the other, other, other overlay? Uh, this, this is an overlay. And then also the notifications is a separate overlay. Honestly, it would be better for my system resources if it, it was all a single page, but I just have them all um, separate. You're, you're working on a normalized overlay plugin architecture. Yeah, I mean, I've seen some overlay things do that where basically you have a canvas like a 1080p canvas and you can drag and drop your widgets that'd be that'd be cool transition fade and is like fade just built in otherwise you create your own like whoosh okay um so yeah, Svelte is really cool. The thing is, Vue.js also has really good transition animations. I mean, I think there's like a separate, a separate library for. Um, needs to work on his white balance, of of his camera, but um, I know I've used. I mean, that's what that's what's happening over here. So whenever a, a message animates in, that's using transition animations, here. Um, and these are fairly easy. I mean, it didn't disgust me. It was just like, I, I know that he <laughs> he runs a really like great website on like, um, uh, yeah, View Mastery. He doesn't run it, but he's one of the teachers on it. I feel like doing a lot of video, you should at least know about video settings <laughs> and like set your white balance correctly. I don't know. Uh, the only reason I care about it is because it happens to me. Like, and I don't like to see it. I think right now I look mostly natural, but if my white if my white balance wasn't set here, I'll show you what it would look like if my white white balance was not good. Um, you're not going to be able to hear me for a second, but I'm gonna I'm gonna show an example. See, it was like very, it was very orange. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it can look worse too. So hot and cold. Yeah. I guess this is technically more cold, right? But it does, I do, I like the, the, it feels more natural, right? I don't, I don't know. I guess we're going to use felt. I feel like I'm going to struggle with it though, because like the documentation does not jump out at me. I still kind of don't understand what's happening here. Uh, and Shrikam, thank you very much for the 10 months. Appreciate you. The docs are poor because it's like I, this kind of makes sense. Okay, like use this animation. This gets access to the node. Um, typewriter effect. And Timon, thank you for the, for the nineteen months. Nineteen is a bit of a weird number, isn't it? Isn't it? That does not fade in and out. <laughs> um, oh, oh, it, no, I see. It wants me to update the example. I see. <laughs> I was like, wait, what? And then on the P tag, uh, transition 
fade. Yeah, there we go. That seems good. Because so this is this is mostly what we want, right? So we want the fade animation and then we'll just use ifs. Okay. We've we've decided on svelte. Um, let's generate a svelte app. I do believe they use Vite now. So yeah, we can generate a a svelte app using Vite. Um, and I'm going to call it uh, weather overlay. Install dependencies. And then run it. Welcome in, Jen. Thank you for the rain. Jen Janad. I don't know if I've, I've seen your stream before. What you working on? GitHub Community Standards Project. Nice. Welcome in, Raiders. Glad to have you. Uh, we are working on an overlay, and we just chose an API we're going to use, and we just chose Svelte to build it with, and we just generated our Svelte app. So here we go. Got ourselves a Vite and Svelte app. Let's write some code. Welcome in the she boss. Good to see you. Um, all right, I'm gonna rip out all of the um, extra stuff. Like I'm gonna clear this app.css. Um, in the component, we'll get rid of everything in the script. The main will just say hello world. Hey, welcome in, Joy Coder. Good to see you. We'll get rid of the, the styles there. All right, so we got a super basic hello world component. Um, I'm going to remove this lib folder. And thank you for the two gifted, the she boss. Pre appreciate you. And we'll keep the assets folder, but I'm going to delete the Svelte logo. Cool. So at this point, bare bones, good to go. Um, and in my index.html, I'm just going to update the title and also remove the, the favicon link there. This is just going to say weather. Great. So at this point, it says hello world, and we have weather in the title. Yeah, I don't know if we're going to do anything intense enough for um, uh, like Green Sock Animation Project, but yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah, I, I haven't seen... Um, is this a... Um, is this a GitHub thing? Oh, somebody mentioned this last time. Like, they literally have a service for uploading your location live. Yeah. We're going to build our own version of this. Um, not, not necessarily as interactive as this, but a way for someone to up, upload their location without, honestly, without making it public. Because what I want is I want to have the overlay show it, but I don't want somebody to be able to go and, like, look at the exact latitude, longitude. But... Oh, Svelte Kit? I'm good. I'm good. This is uh, literally one little page with, with uh, weather in the center. There's not multiple pages. It'll never be server rendered. Yeah, and welcome in, Jin. Glad, glad to have you. FindCJ.com. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, we have a basic app. Here's the thing. We don't, we don't have any linting. I don't... I guess we could just do prettier. Let me see. I'm gonna okay. I'm I'm gonna spend and welcome in uh, more more Morador Morador. Glad to have you. Um, I I'm going to spend three minutes researching how to do ES lint with Svelte, and if we can't figure it out, we'll skip it. Um, actually, if we can do ES lint Airbnb Svelte, and also, did we get TypeScript or did we not get TypeScript? No, we got JavaScript. Is there a way to do Svelte with TypeScript? We might have to regenerate this thing. Um, yeah, we wanted Svelte with TypeScript. Dang it. Okay, well, all of our work removing everything was for, for not. Um, I'm going to remove that. And honestly, I'm just going to run the, the interactive uh, 
CLI. NPM create Vite at latest. I don't want to use SvelteKit because then I have to configure it. Like I, I guess I guess it's not that much configuration because I would need to add the adapter static, but the SvelteKit docs are really intense. And I'm telling you, this is a very simple web page. It does one thing and it does that one thing really well. Um, we don't, we don't, it's, I think it's overkill for this. Um, here we go. <laughs> I was just thinking this project needs more configs. But I, I get what you're saying, Sidetrix, but my, my experience with two different SvelteKit apps are that it, it actually it isn't that easy because there's there's a lot more concepts like the concept of like the page file and the server file and everything else. Um, I'm good. I'm good. This is all I need. Um, okay, we're back. We're back to this. Um, let's open it back up. Uh, kill our timer. Uh, and then rip out all the stuff just like we did before. Um, so that looks fine. This, again, I guess it's not much different. You can just do langts. I wasn't super familiar with how Svelte does this, but langts seems fine. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, 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 I agree with that, that, it, that Svelte kit definitely used to be really easy, but... No, and not in in my experience it's like it's a lot like if you're if your goal is to build like a a large complex app definitely you can reach for that but this i'm telling you this is just way too simple for that um okay and now we've got we're back to here um now i'm gonna set a three minute timer to go figure out how to do uh eslint Felt TypeScript Airbnb. Somebody has had to have created create a a config for this. Um, use Airbnb's ESLint config with TypeScript and prettier in Svelte apps. All right, M Hacker, tell me how to do it. Do I really need all these dependencies? I guess I do. You're giving me the ESLint. You're giving me the prettier RC. Any ESLint ignore? Eh, it seems about right. Let's try it. Yeah, I mean, so I, I, I so if, if you're a beginner, I would be hesitant to install this many dependencies, but having set up ESLint before, I know that these make sense. So um, this combines ESLint with TypeScript. This is the core ESLint uh, dependency. This is ESLint with Airbnb and TypeScript, which makes sense. This is ESLint that gets combined with Prettier. Uh, we probably don't need this one, ESLint comments. Plugin import um, helps with uh, doing like the module imports. We probably don't need plugin promise. So here's what I'm gonna do. Um, we're gonna copy this and then just remove the things I don't think we need. Um, so like, I don't want promise. I don't want comments. Seems good to me. This is what we're going to install now. And then um, we can look at their config. And uh, eslint rc dot. I think I probably need cjs, common js. Um, no extraneous dependencies, no mutable exports, no labels, no restricted syntax. I don't think we need to disable those. Maybe we will, but we'll come back to it. So we have the TypeScript ESLint plugin, the Svelte plugin. Get rid of the comments, get rid of promises. And there we go. Okay, so we've got that. And then we need a prettier RC.
it's not dot cjs um because it's json single quote true trailing comma yeah use tabs tab width of two are you crazy you combined Air airbnb has a two width tab print width don't know what that is um and then parse ts with typescript i have never had to do that i'm just going to remove it i guess you're yeah you're totally right drills if we did uh pretty rc dot cjs then we technically can do uh, module dot exports equals that and then um uh, I'm going to completely reload the window so that it has all the dependencies, all the latest config, and we're out of time. So if this doesn't work, I delete those two files, and then we just keep on coding. Um, all right. We're here. We're here. Let's give it a second. ESLint has failed to load. Prettier TypeScript ESLint has been merged into Prettier. Okay. Um, if we look at the thing that I installed, um, what is this undefined dependency? <laughs> what, 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 what is this? Somebody literally has a package on NPM called undefined. This is defined. What is undefined? There's no way. Why did this happen? I mean, it exports void zero, but this could have been bad. This could have been. This could have been. <laughs> uh, I, I was just time boxing setting up my configs, though. I'm this I'm this far in, so I'm gonna set another three minutes uh, just to figure out all the issues. So first of all, yeah, we just got hacked. Um, uninstall undefined. I don't know why that happened. Uh, second of all, um, the other things didn't get installed, so. We didn't get prettier. We didn't get, um, we did get ESLint config prettier. We didn't get ESLint plugin import. They should update. Oh, dev dependencies. And then these got installed as dependencies instead of dev dependencies? The heck? Basically, that, that, that article we followed, the copy-paste was not a good copy-paste. Um, that was a really bad copy-paste. Should not have done that. Just move the lines. Well, it did it for me because it also updated my package lock. All right. Do we have everything? Let's reload the window and see if prettier kicks in. I I I no, I I think what happened is this copy this copy paste here somehow installed a dependency called undefined. Let's see. Uh, now if we look at this file, prettier and TypeScript or an ESLint will try to kick in. And it breaks. Let's see why. That's why. Why is this complaining? Okay, the person that said use felt kit, this probably would have helped us because it would have set up our linter, but yeah, I'm not gonna deal with this. I'm just gonna delete these. Now we can we can think about what what went wrong what went wrong is i went with the first article thinking that it would work and then things just went this went horribly wrong from there so uh, let's get rid of all these dependencies 
um, No, like I, I just, I just wanted some, some guardrails for while I was coding to like enforce certain things. But like this, the fact that it's not complaining that there aren't semicolons is really, is, is like it, it hurts, it hurts, it hurts me inside. <laughs> like, like this, I wanted to be able to run uh, one command that would format the file like this, but it's fine. Let's not worry about it. Let's call the API. So um, I'm gonna create a, a new folder called lib. And then inside of there, I'm going to create a file called weatherapi.ts. And then this is going to have a function that says get weather. It takes in an object that has a latitude and a longitude. Um, and it returns it. So we'll export this function. Um, yeah, and I guess that's the other thing is like um, I don't get any sort of like TypeScript errors. That's like, hey, you're not or like linter errors. That's like, hey, this is the any type. Um, so I'll make an interface. Uh, get weather props. Get weather options. Yeah, it. View view is the is the best experience I've had with developer tooling. TSC gives me those errors, okay. Um, but latitude is a number, and longitude is a number as well. Um, uh, and then this is of type get weather options. Great. Now uh, this will be an async function because we need to call an API. And um, we are going to call this one, the, the, the Norwegian one that worked really well. So they gave us um, weather for the next hour. Good to go. I need no implicit any. There we go. It's like, hey, that's the any type. And then um, there's that. OK, so we uh, I'm just going to use fetch for this. We call the endpoint. We pass in the uh, latitude. Um, we pass in the longitude. Reverse that. So this is latitude. Latitude. And this is longitude, like that. Um, that'll give us back the response, and uh, we will try catch it because it's possible that something goes wrong. Um, and then if uh, response was okay, we'll try to parse it. If it wasn't okay, um, we're gonna throw an error with uh, response dot status text as the error message. Um, should I throw an error here or should I throw an, a return like an empty object? I think I'll just throw an error. I'll just like forward that thrown error. Um, and if the response was okay, we can parse it as JSON like this. Um, Else thrower, oh no, I'm going to return. So right here, I'm literally going to return my custom response. Uh, and then that is an early return that will prevent the, the throw. Why catch and rethrow? Um, because I need to throw, I guess you're right. You're totally right. Because if this fails, um, it will already throw that error. But what we want is uh, if the response was not okay from the, the API, then we throw the error. Good call, good call. Uh, catch and throw, is this baseball? I mean... 
sort of. <laughs> We're throwing the data around. We're receiving the data from the API and then, um, I don't know, doing something with it. OK, what, what next? We just parsed the JSON, which means we took all this data and now we can use it. Um, so what we want, I think, is the meta response. So if we look at meta, we don't want meta. Um, and then does this API allow me to set the units? We might have to just do the conversion ourselves. The API is api.met.ino. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> yes, I am using a Norwegian API, but they support all 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 place all latitudes and longitudes. My guess is they're forwarding to like weather.gov or something like that, but unit unit probability code unit named Celsius. Yeah. Yeah, what's up, TD Racing? We, we were going to use Open Weather Map, but it just it required an API key, and I'm trying to build a thing that will work for everyone without getting rate limited. Um, that's the main reason we're using this, because it is free and there is no rate limiting. So I think what we want is time series zero, because that's the current like the current hours forecast. Um, and that's really all we care about because the rest of it is, is the, for the rest of the day. Cool. So if we do, uh, and actually let me just copy this raw data and we'll get, we'll get some, some TypeScript types out of it. Um, so I'm going to create a folder, call it interfaces. And then in there, I'll create a file called uh, weatherresponse.ts. And then I have this extension that says uh, paste as, uh, you need to paste as types. Um, and we'll call this top level thing the root. Um, and basically, it took that JSON and turned it into TypeScript, a TypeScript interface that we can use. So the root object has a. Uh, type property, a geometry property, and a properties property. And then if we look at properties, um, they have a time series array, which is we, what we want. And then they have a time series array of time series. And then a time series has a time and data. And data has uh, instant. And then instant details gives us air temperature, relative humidity, wind speed. Uh, this extension is called, uh, it's from type of code, I think it is. Like, t yeah, oh, quick type, quick type. Paste JSON as code. This is the one. Um, how, do I, how do I link to the, um, the, 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 the page? This, these are the hacks I'm here for. Marketplace. There we go. OK, so we've got that type. But now what I can do is I can say that um, this response is um, of that type. It's of the root type. Import that in. So import that type. Now JSON has typing. So we can say that uh, temperature is JSON dot, uh, properties dot time series at zero dot data dot instant dot details dot air temperature and that's in celsius um, dot 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 yeah um, what will happen if the response is different uh, this this line of code will break <laughs> because it, the, the it won't be able to dial into those specific properties um, so yeah, yeah, we could put the question mark to make sure that those properties actually exist. But here's what I'll do. Um, I'll say temperature is equal to this. Well, none. And then we'll try to do this.
And we'll make this uh, unknown instead of nan. The TypeScript is going to complain about this. So this is a string or a number. <laughs> um, swallow the error and then just return the temperature. Yeah, you're totally right. We technically could do the optional chaining here, but that's a whole lot of question marks. I guess we'd do this and then this. And, but I think this is a, a bit easier to read. Non? Not available. Great. Uh, we'll come back here and, and add more properties uh, if we need them. Um, I don't know. Yeah, and then we can do the, uh, the, the, the conversion. So, um, we'll say C is temperature and F is this. Well, Well, <laughs> we'll have temperature C, and then we'll have temperature F. Same thing. Um, and then we'll set temperature F immediately after. Fixing TypeScript issues? Oh, it's kind of like ESLint fix all auto fixable problems. Cool. Yeah, never, never heard of it. Never used it. All right. We got the temperature. That's great. That's honestly the main thing we need. Uh, we also we want to know what is the type of weather that is happening right now. Like, is it cloudy? Is it windy? Here we go. Next one hours. Clear sky day. So uh, we need to look at their API docs, and we need to know what are all of the possible symbols, and then um, map those to like images or icons. Um, symbol code. Here they are. Are these defined like in the meta response? Like how how did it know? I guess are, are these just all? These are all of the ones that are possible <laughs> in my current forecast, which is actually really funny. But what we need to find, yeah, those are the ones in the current response. I thought I was like I was like that's it seems like a lot, but it is because it's over like today and tomorrow night. Yeah, there's snow in the forecast apparently. Um, so what I want to know are what are all of the possible uh, weather codes? Symbol code? What do they call it? Yeah, symbol code. Um, along with the new JSON format, we also have a new set of weather icons. They can be downloaded as a gzipped tar archive using the weather 2.0 icon service. The file name minus extension corresponds to the symbol code in the JSON format. Okay. Um, did we get back a wind direction? Yes, we did. Here they are. Here are all the possible codes. Snow showers. Do you show multiple icons?
Do I use the hosted version? Am I allowed to use the hosted version? Um, the icons are not meant to be called on demand, but to be downloaded as a gzip tar archive and packaged with your application. Okay, I can do that. So they mentioned, um, where is the archive? Yeah, call our API, but don't download the images. That's fine. I'm, I'm okay with that. I just need to figure out where the zip file is. Oh, it's here. Okay, give me a second. All right. Um, can I unzip this tar file in one go without looking any, anything up? I think it's tar xzf. I'm a I'm a hacker. <laughs> okay. Um, cool. Um, and the license is MIT. Great. First try. Yeah. Look, Ma, no hands. <laughs> All right, and I think we probably, SVGs would be good because those will scale really nicely. Um, and we'll keep both. We'll have PNG and SVG available, um, but I see no reason to have PDF images. Remembering tar options are the most vis <laughs> difficult part of software engineering. XVF would have been better. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I was just trying to go by the the, the, la the one I remember. It always reminds me of XKCD. So, like, I don't know. I don't know. Okay, so we have PNGs and we have SVGs. Um... We're just gonna go with uh, the PNGs. Extract verbose file. I did extract Z, I don't know what the Z is for. <laughs> Z is for zipped. It was a TGZ, it wasn't just a TG. So that means I did need the Z, Zerbose. <laughs> um, without Z, it won't extract. See, I did the right thing. I think I was in that case, I was missing the V option. Yeah, these are really nice. Um, the only issue is, like, I would have to map them from the symbols to them, and I don't necessarily want to do that. So, uh, good. We have we have the we have the codes, um, and then um, we'll pass in the symbol, and this is going to be. I'm gonna put this in a variable. Um, Um, what is this type? This is of type instant details. So this is instant details or null. And then we need to import that type. Great. And so this will be details dot, um, it's not even in details. It's in a different one. Yeah. Weather overlay for the IRL streams. Yep. Um, and actually, I don't even need a mapping because now all of the names of the image files are exactly the names of the symbol. So I don't even need to map them. I literally can just point to that to that uh, image. Um, I, I'm, do, I'm doing TypeScript. <laughs> so what is, does instant have the property that I need? 
Yeah, because then I would have to do next, I think it's next one hours. So grab the zero at the one. Let's take a quick stretch. Yeah, I mean, so technically if I was accessing and I cared about the type of that symbol code, yeah, I would need to update the type to have all, all possible ones, but I don't think I'm going to be using TypeScript code to access that symbol. I am just going to pass it into a generated URL, at least I think. So this will be a next one hours summary symbol code. Um, what is the type of instant? Instant. Start that off as null. Rename this to uh, instant. Um, yeah. So now this is going to be instant dot. Wait, is that right? Data dot instant dot details. I don't, I don't, I need to do this. <laughs> okay, here we, here we are. Instant is uh, this. And now I can use instant out here. So now I can say instant dot, well, I don't want details. I want instant dot. <sighs> Never mind. I need to even go one level up from there. Um, what is this property called? It's literally just called data. And data is of type time series dot data. I got the data you need. Yeah, I realize I'm not looking at chat much. I'm sorry. I'm just trying to get this going because I'm having a, I'm having a time. Okay, next one hours. Dot details. Dot dot summary dot symbol code. There we go. And then um, I do need to do that. And if it doesn't exist, do we have a symbol code for unknown? Um, well, we'll handle that in the UI. .NET MAUI is a cross-platform development. Yeah. Oh, thanks you. <laughs> Thank you, Mdoza. I'm trying my best, but it, things have been pretty frustrating today for whatever reason. Have they? I don't know. I feel like it, it does feel like things were frustrating. And also, like, here's the thing. If I wasn't coding defensively, this code would be a lot simpler. But I'm thinking about... Uh, like, what if we get back a bad API response? Or like, what if these properties actually don't exist? How are we going to handle that? And I think this code is close enough to handling that without really throwing errors, uh, which is why this stuff is getting complex. Because honestly, all I really had to do was to pass that property in directly. But that, the reason I'm doing this is because this code could break. Because I, I don't know if the API is always going to respond in this way. I would hope they do. But all right, we've got the symbol code. We've got the uh, temperature. Um, 
wind speed I think I want as well. Data dot, well actually this will be um, meters per second. MPS, is that a good abbreviation? Uh, data dot instant dot details dot um, wind speed. I guess if I do this, I don't need the try catch. <laughs> Should I rewrite this without the try catch? I think I will. Um, that's what somebody was telling me to do earlier. I think it was Codex, and I was like, I don't want to write all these question marks, but I guess I will write these these question marks because now I can do it's this or it's that. Um, and then similarly, well, this will, I'll have to turn this into a ternary, but this will be, uh, if temperature C has a value, then perform the calculation. Otherwise it's in a, if temperature C does not equal in a. Yeah, no worries, Codex. I, I believe you. It's just like, um, it's a lot of code. Okay, first of all, that needs a comma. Second of all, TypeScript doesn't like this because it's like, hey, it could be a string or a number. But the thing is, if I already checked that it's not a string, Or it's like, hey, I know that this is a number. Like that. I guess that works. There might be a better way to do it. Are we seeing an ad? Cool. Um, uh, this is my opportunity to remind you, if you are in the United States and you have not voted yet, you should vote. Um, and I'm going to clear up a, a few misconceptions. If you don't have an opinion on a candidate or an issue, you can actually leave that question blank or just mark everything in that question and then it will just be discounted. The rest of your ballot will still be uh, tabulated as long as the rest of your ballot is filled out in the right way. Um, second of all, please vote. The, the voter turnout is just so low, please vote. Um, and second of all, if you're in line before the, the polls close, you are still allowed to vote. Um, uh, so like if you have to work today, just go after work. Go vote. Yeah, and what's up, Kufe one? Uh, and then on the on the point of, of getting informed, lots of free online resources to learn about the ballot in your state or county or city. Uh, Ballotopedia is really great. It gives you a breakdown of what it means if you vote like yes on an amendment or a proposition or whatever it's called in your state, or what if you vote no. It also gives uh, a breakdown of the candidates that you're voting for. YouTube has a really good... Um, channel how to vote in every state that has you can pick your state it'll tell you how to vote and also vote411.org has more info on voting so yeah <clears throat> i mean it's not that they're rigged it's that like i don't know what am i supposed to do people are seeing ads i got to talk about something and also it's just really on my mind that like i, I saw i just saw some um uh, statistics about uh the the percentage turnout in colorado which is the state that i'm in and it's it's abysmal for like any age group that's under 50 yeah. We're voting on midterm. So we're not voting for a president, but we're voting on, um, uh, like in my case, we're like voting on the uh, uh, mayor of Denver and uh, also the uh, the Senate. So yeah. Yeah, yeah. I know. Stop me. Stop me. I know. <laughs> All right. Uh, and it made, like the, the biggest portion of my, uh, of my ballot was like local government. It's probably like half local government and then like a few Senate as well. Yeah. 
Yeah, it, and it's true, Kuve one. I mean, I think that's why the turnout is low. Is like people feel like like their vote doesn't count or like or whatever else. But like that that this that this is literally why you need to vote. Like if you feel dif disenfranchised, if you feel like 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 you're not represented, you you need to vote because uh, you not voting like there there's gonna be one person that is disagrees with your opinions and votes the opposite way and they did go to vote but if you were to vote you could have canceled them out um just go vote just go vote that's all i gotta say about that okay <laughs> we all need a vacation i agree look at this code i need a, i need a vacation from this code okay at this point we have the symbol we have the wind speed uh this is meters per second how can i convert meters per second into uh, miles per hour um, I do believe this is meter, meters per second. This is wind speed. I think I can probably look in their docs for wind speed. Um, you know, I don't even know if I'm looking at the right docs. What, what endpoint am I on? I'm on location forecast. data time series one meter per second is that two three six nine three four two three six nine four <gasps> you're off by one <laughs> i should probably look it up <laughs> um two two three six nine th check the metadata in the api Thank you, thank you, uh, Evlon, Evlani Gamer. It is meters per second, which is good. Um, air temperature Celsius. I don't think I can change it from this API because this API is in Norway and they don't. I, they could probably care less about Fahrenheit. Um, I think so. This is the number that that Codex gave me as well. Um, meters per second to miles per hour. Two, two, three, six, nine, three, six, two, nine, two, one. I don't, I'm okay with more decimals. But I guess also we could... Um, Well, well, two fixed it on the other side if it's not undefined. Um, yeah, we'll we'll round it in the UI. This this will stay the way it is because um, rounding is isn't straightforward in JavaScript. Like there is math dot round, but I probably want two fixed. But two fixed converts a number into a string, and right now it's possible that this is actually undefined. So then, if we tried to convert und use it's fine, it's fine. Uh, I should convert this to kilometers per hour. So div divided by a thousand, multiply by a thousand, divide by a thousand. Divide by 3.6. Oh, seconds versus hours, I see. But no, but it's kilometers. I see. So it's divide by uh, 60 times one meter per second is 3.6 kilometers per hour. Cool. <laughs> that makes sense. Probably. I, I don't have enough brain power right now. All right, we got wind speed. Um, what else do we need? Air pressure? Relative humidity? This is enough. This is this is all we need. So we have the temperature, wind speed, and the symbol code. Oh, wait, do we have wind direction? Wind from direction 177. I think they were saying the direction is a degrees. Zero is north, 90 is east. Uh, 
So if it's if the wind direction is 177, then it's basically south. Multiply by with 3.6. Air pressure and wind direction so you can land an airplane near me. Oh, cool. Okay. Am I using the classic or the complete API? This is the endpoint. Um, oh, compact, I guess is what I'm using. I guess I didn't even know that that, that was a thing. Yeah, thank you, God Cowboy. Another reminder to go vote. Go vote. Just do it. Just go vote. Just vote. Just vote. That's all you got to do. Just vote. Okay, um, the complete is JSON forecast with all values. Compact, a shorter version with only the most used parameters. Yeah, I'm okay with compact. Um, let's look at classic. Uh, in the United States, there are the midterm elections. Um, that is XML data. <laughs> I don't know if there's a property I can pass in to get JSON. It's funny that compact returns JSON by default. Um, uh, wind direction data dot instant dot details dot wind from direction. I guess we could convert the wind direction uh, to a specific like northeast, south, or west, or northwest, south, southwest. Um, for now, we probably could take that degrees and like point like use a CSS transform to to transform it. I think. Yeah. I am the best physician. What, you mean like a doctor? Or <laughs> you mean like someone that does physics? Uh, okay, this is good. All right. At this point, we want to show this in the UI. So at this point, we've only done, written the code to get the data we've extracted out the things that we actually need now let us put it into the ui so here app.svelte uh, we'll have a uh, a function we can call that says like get uh, weather it in turn will put the weather onto uh, like an internal variable um, really we need uh, this as a type. This right here, we need we need the type of this. So I wanted to find an interface. Um, weather result, I guess. It has all of these properties. Um, symbol code. I'm just gonna make it a string. I know that we actually have the valid symbol codes, but I'll just make it a string for now. Uh, wind direction is a number. Both of these are numbers. And then both of these are numbers. Um, what I can say is this thing uh, returns a weather result. Uh, a, it returns a promise that w resolves to a uh, weather result. Prom promise. Promise. Like that. Uh, but what I can do over here is I can say like uh, current weather um, starts off as null, but I can I can type this thing to say that it is of type weather result or null, um, and then I can import this in. And then we can also import in uh, get weather from this file. So whenever we call, let's say, get current weather, uh, we will in turn set current weather equal to awaiting get weather with a given latitude longitude. Make this async. Um, and then for now, we're going to hard code my latitude longitude. Actually, we don't even have to hard code it. We'll, we'll pull it from the, the params. Um, so latitude, I'm going to create these params in a second, but I'll say params.get. Lat. lat. 
and then longitude is params.get longe. But what are params? They are uh, from the URL. So there's a built-in way to get them. We can say a new URL search params, and we'll pass in window.location dot uh, search um, and that'll give us access to latitude and longitude should I do LNG what did they do in their API oh they did lat and lawn lawn lat lawn lat lawn they did I'm gonna match their API um, okay this is complaining because I told it latitude was gonna be a number So the, the right thing to do, if we're, if we're doing the right thing, is we need to make sure that this actually exists. So like uh, latitude uh, is that. Um, and it's saying that this is a string. I thought this could return. Does this retur just return undefined? Um, and it's like... <sighs> I could just pass in, I could, I could do this. This, this sh should get us there if we just parse this as a number. This, however, could return, um, uh, a NAN, not a number. So yeah, if params has is a thing. So if it has lat, if it doesn't have lat, or it doesn't have long, we straight up have uh, an error. And we'll just say missing required params, like so. Great. So we handle that like when the component loads. Um, so we will basically, I'll never call this function if error has a value inside of it. Also, we should try we should try catch this because if getting the weather fails, then we can set the error here as well. So error equals error dot message. Um, well, uh, let's call this error message because that's conflicting with, I mean, we could have called the other one just E like this. It's the any type. This is fine. This is fine. This is fine. How's my course going? It's not. I've <laughs> just been doing other things. Uh, rename wind direction to wind from direction. I agree with that. And then technically temperature is a number or a string. Wait, what did we do about wind speed though? Wind speed is possibly... Oh well, oh well. Yeah, I, I was thinking about that auto magic. Like technically, like most of the time, if you have like really strict TypeScript on, you really need to say that this is of type error because otherwise it's unknown. But I know that it's going to be an error object with a message property. Um, cool. So I'm going to bring in, um, I think it's like on mount. Yeah, on mount from Svelte. And then when the component mounts and is ready to go, we'll get the current weather. Um, honestly, never mind. Don't even need to do that. We'll literally just call this because the data can exist before the component even mounts. So uh, uh, when this component loads up, if we have the required parameters, we're just going to get that weather. And uh, good to go. So right here will be our little weather div. And for now, we will have a, a div that has um, current weather dot temperature inside of it. Um, now, we only want to show this 
if current weather has a value. So um, I have to remember the, the Svelte way of doing this. There, I, I have no idea. Let's go to the Svelte docs. Um, we want if and else box. Yeah, I just never remember the syntax. Here it is. Okay, so if current weather has a value, do the thing. Um, is that it? Yep. Uh, if uh, error message has a value, do the thing. We will show the error message right here. Cool. Um, if current weather does not equal null. Unexpected token. I'm using handlebars. Look at me. <laughs> I guess I could just do if current weather is a thing. Cool. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, you could argue for or against this syntax in Svelte. Like, like what Ryan is saying, you can clearly see where this block starts and ends. Um, I just don't use Svelte enough to remember the remember the syntax. Yeah. Is this the API for their in, the data for their entire API? I don't know if I care about that as much. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, like again, you can have arguments for or against all of this different syntax, but Okay, that looks good to me. Is our is 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 the thing running? It's not. We're going to run it and we're going to get the weather in Denver. Actually, we're going to get an error that says missing required params. Good, 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 good. Um, if we pass in these and refresh the page, we get back object object, which is great. <laughs> it's great. Um, what? How is that even possible? Oh, because it's C or F. That makes sense. So we have to pick one. We have to pick one. So let's do uh, F. 65.84. Nice. Nice, we did it. Let's pick a font. Um, I think I just want to use Open Sans, but uh, Font Source is a really good place to um, to get uh, Google Fonts without loading them from Google Fonts. F F. <laughs> it's pretty funny. <laughs> I'm still live. I haven't I haven't gone down. Um, let's look at these fonts. Bunny. We'll see. We'll see. I don't know what that is. Uh, Open Sans is really nice. Let's look at Open Sans. It's just a nice sans serif. Um, and if you look at it bold, that's really nice too. Actually, I want to do like 800 uh, bold. But uh, Font Source is great because you can install it. And then now these fonts will just load from, uh, like when you build the app, the fonts get bundled with it. So you're not loading fonts from uh, Google servers, which is cool. Um, and install Open Sans. That's it is a really tasty. I like it. I like it. It reminds me of Futura, which is one of my favorite fonts. So it, it is my favorite font. Uh, Futura Bold, or Futura Black, is my favorite font. Um, uh, font Source, yeah, FontSource.org. They they have all of the fonts that are listed on Google. All right. Uh, now, if I want to use it, I can import it at the root, and so this basically just gets added to my app. Like the font becomes available if I do this. Um, like this. Um, nerd font? Like, is that a type of font? I don't see it. They have, I do, I think they do, yeah, they have Anonymous Pro. This is the font I use in my editor. Look at that. It's a nice monospace font. Uh, I use this one in my editor and in my terminal. Um, I don't know if they have Fiber. I thought Fiber Code was like a paid font. Oh no, they have it. And they have Fiber Sans. Nice. Puppins. Puppins. Um, nerd font is a site that lists fonts. 
Oh, I've never used it. Wait, is this it? Is this it? Okay, <laughs> regardless, we're using Open Sans. That's all I really care about. Um, so uh, if we look at, um, isn't this what I chose? I think I chose Open Sans. We're gonna give it a font weight of 800. Oh, it's beautiful. Uh, and now if I wanna set that font, I can just put it on the body like this. <clears throat> a lot of people here. Welcome in. How'd you find me? Or is it just that time of day? <laughs> Regardless, glad to have you. Um, let me add this CSS to app.css. So this is global CSS. So all of the fonts on the page will be set to um, Open Sans or Sans Serif. And then um, I'm going to add my own little class here called temperature. Um, and this will have a font weight of 800. So the font should be set to uh, Open Sans um, in the recommended list. Awesome. Glad to hear it. Welcome in. Glad to have you. <laughs> and now, check this out. I mean, I thought it was going to look better than that. But it, it looks better than Times New Roman. Let's increase the font size. Um, and honestly, OK, before, before we move any further, I want this to be directly centered on the page. Oh, nice, Ren Ren. Glad to hear it. And Lit Limits, thank you for the sub. Uh, love the streams. You motivated, motivated me to build new projects. Nice, nice, nice. Um, a friend introduced me to my channel, and you recently completed a six-month boot camp. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. Welcome in, Ghost Com Comrade. <laughs> um, here's the thing. This is going to be an overlay. So what I want is I want all of the information to be centered on the page. So that way, when somebody adds this as an overlay... Um, it will always be in the center of whatever they add as an overlay. The other thing is I kind of, I want the font size to be dynamic based on the size of the page as well. So with that said, I'm going to give this a class of, um, I guess I don't even need to give it a class. We're just going to target the main element and put it in the center, put its contents in the center. So this has a width of 100% and a height of 100% and we'll make it a flex box. Uh, put everything in the center like so. Great, but main, I do believe is inside of another element. So if we look at our elements, we have div ID app and then that has main inside of it. So what I need to do is I need to set app to have a width of 100% and a height of 100%. So now main takes up 100% of that, and then app, I want to take up 100% of the body, which will be in uh, viewport unit. So this will be 100 uh, view width and um, 100 view height. So body takes up the full page like this, and then app takes up 100% of that, and then main takes up 100% of that, which puts that um, right in the center. You can see we've got a little bit of uh, scroll bars here. Uh, and for that, we just need to remove the margin, the default margin. So we can do like a really basic reset. Say everything has no margin, everything has no padding, padding, and everything has a box sizing of a border box, which is more predictable in terms of like calculating width and stuff. Great. So now <laughs> I centered a div in 40 seconds, 10 times average, 10 times faster than the average developer. So now, no matter the size of the page, uh, that, that, is right in the center. Yeah, that's right in the center. And that's what we want. But now another thing we can do is we can give it a, the, a relative font size as well. So um, let's just say inside main, the font size, let's just try three vmin. So vmin is a unit that is the minimum of the width versus the height. So with three vmin, um, the font size should now be relative to the size of the page. Yeah, you can see when it gets really tiny, it's like really small, but we want it to be even more. Let's go like 10 vmin, 20 vmin, yeah. But now the font increases and decreases with the size of the page. So that's great. 
Um, let's get fancy with it and let's put a little uh, degrees icon on it. Um, like that. Actually, yeah, I just want I just want the plain old degree icon because then I can put my own letter, uh, which will be in the right font. A, A. Um, if we wrap this in a little span, um, we can make this. We'll say this class of info. I just want a little info class that <clears throat> is like a lighter gray color, so it it isn't as pronounced as the the text that, that we care about. Um, patterns for the background? I'll check it out. Oh, these are cool. But no, <laughs> not, not for this. Mainly because this is going to be an overlay. Like, it needs to be fully transparent so you can see the stuff behind it. But that's pretty cool. Um, for accessibility, you should always add a fixed measure. It's good to know no one will ever go to this page directly. This is going to be embedded on top of uh, a stream like this. Um, OK, I want this color to be, um, what color is that? White? No, I want, Maybe it's like slightly, I don't know. We could, we could go to, um, um, a color. We, we need to pick a color scheme. Should there not be a space between that? Does this make more sense? Can I create a glass effect? I think so. Yeah. If I set the background to like a uh, white, whitish opaque, it, it should work that way. Yeah. Font site site was a uh, font source fontsource.org. I think it needs a space too. Yeah. Well, the basically it's going to be about that size when it's overlaid. Um Fine. Okay. So at this point we have the temperature. Let's also put the image right here. Um so I'm going to have an image tag and the source is going to be dynamically set to be current weather dot symbol code. But we need to construct a, a URL that goes into the assets folder that does symbol code dot SVG. And so this should be um, assets slash SVG slash that symbol code. Like that. Let's see what we get. Nice. A broken image. Um, Assets SVG clear sky day dot SVG. Um, do these just get put into the public folder? Let's see. Do I need a dot slash? Do I need a assets SVG? Really, these these never mind. these need to be in the public folder because I'm not I'm never dynamically loading them. Um, these need, need to be in public. So now those will just be loaded from the root, and then over here, this will literally just be slash SVG. I mean, I guess the other thing I could do is in the public folder, I create a folder called images, and then we throw both of these in there. And then we also delete that Vite image because that's that stuck around. But now this becomes images slash SVG slash that. Look at that. Look at us. It's happening. It's happening. Um, let's give this div a class of uh, symbol. And we'll make it a little bit smaller. So um, probably just like width of 50%. Brings it down a little bit. And then uh, we'll make it itself a, a flex box. So that way it, it um, I think align items is all I need. 
What did we put symbol on? This is the symbol container. Welcome back, Fozzie. Drop the decimal part? Oh, you mean like round the number? Yeah, we'll, we'll handle that in a second, but that makes sense too. I guess I don't want to put the width on that. I want to put the width on the image directly because the image directly. Um, oh, I see. Yeah, the this needs to be a hundred percent. Yeah. Um, um, yeah, so that, that always needs 100% width. Um, and then if we set the image to be um, width 50%, that should stay in the in the center like that. And it makes it a little bit smaller. Yeah. Yeah, welcome in, Robert Tables. <laughs> <clears throat> you feel like you're doing stand-up right now? Uh, Yesterday, I waffled around using a waff in front of CloudFront. Today, I plan to write a blog post of how... That is silly for this client, and then play mini golf. <laughs> no blockers. <laughs> well, welcome in. Thank you. Thank you for uh, for your update. Um, yeah, I'm using alt text just because my linter was complaining. But again, no one will ever go to this page directly. This is always going to be uh, just uh, um, an overlay. Yeah, well, in a second, we're going to start adding the animation that goes between Fahrenheit and Celsius. Also, I want to display the current time. Um, this looks good so far, though. I like it. I like it. Um, what other information did we have? Wind speed. Okay. Um, yeah, that's why we chose felt is for, for the animations. All right. Now, wind from direction. How? What are we? What are we gonna do with all that? But let's try it. So, uh, if we create ourselves a little div, give it a class of uh, um, wind. Um, we want a little arrow. It's going to point up. By default we'll figure this out we'll figure this out and then we're gonna use uh, CSS to rotate it based on where it's coming from um, so we should be able to do an inline uh, style binding I need to look up the syntax for that on Svelte um, Style, CSS, easing. Does anyone see it? Did I scroll past it? Oh, here it is. Styling. Well, no, I think that's just, yeah, like the style tag. That's not what I want. I want a dynamic style on the element. In inline, in inline style. I mean, I guess that. What's the syntax for that though? I literally just do that, and then with an object. Um, Is it style property? Okay. Well, maybe. <laughs> oh, I see. You're telling me put the property right here. 
and then put the value here. That worked. Okay. <laughs> um, first of all, why did it put it way up there? It needs to be below. It needs to be. That's for an individual property. Yeah, I'm used to binding like an object with multiple properties. Arrow is default down. Okay. Um, and then trans, we'll, we'll put the, that property on the win class. So if we give ourselves a win class. It will have um, uh, transform origin uh, center. Um, we got main, we got that div got the temperature um that's why does it rotate so much uh okay so what what do i need to do to make that thing just like transform in place i guess i probably need to put it in its own i need to have the div outside and then a div inside like this i think That did nothing. Oh, you're right. The div is 100% width. So we really, I mean, do we really just want this in like a span so that it's not a, a block element? And like Pablo is saying, you know what? Just, just set it to a, um, a display. Inline block. Yeah, that's the one. Okay. So now, do 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 do. We can rotate it. <laughs> So now if we dynamically pass in that from, let's see if it, uh, yeah. So now instead of 90 degrees, we'll pass in uh, current weather dot win from direction. Right now, the wind from direction is 189. We learned that 189 would be south, so it would be pointing that way, which means it just, it works. It's perfect. <laughs> it's perfect. Yeah, it's literally, it's pointing the right way because it's like slightly past 180. Huh. Wow. That's, that's kind of amazing. Okay. <laughs> So, but that makes sense because if it was zero, then it would just be the default pointing down. Yeah. Um, what way is north? Down. Zero degrees. And it's where the wind is coming from, not where it's going to. So if the wind is coming from 189, it's coming from the south. Like that. Like from the bottom to the to the top. Um, yeah, from north means it's going south. So if it was zero degrees, it would point down. Cool. Um, do we have a nice little wind icon we can put right there? Um, let's look at the, the icons here. Mm, we could probably use an emote. Um, 
I'm going to make another class called wind direction and put that on, on that element. Cool. Uh, but that would allow me to, to like put a little wind icon. Yeah. The only issue is this emote is going to be like the system provided emote. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> this also this does look like a fart but yeah I, I have a i've been irl streaming over on my personal ca channel um and irl means in real life so uh the stream that i did yesterday i was walking around a park and then we also walked over to like a shopping center and and uh yeah so that was near the shopping center but i was also in this park um but Oh yeah, and this is the part of the stream where I tried to do some IRL coding, but I had a really bad signal. But this was literally the only place in the park that had a, a picnic table. Um, that's that's me being frustrated because I was like, this is literally the only picnic table. But I brought my tablet and my keyboard with me. I was going to try to do some coding out in nature. Um, but the, what we're building right now is going to be a little overlay. So this this little piece right here is going to be overlaid right there, and it's going to provide the latest the latest weather. As soon as I stream it, it's no longer in IRL. No, but it is because I'm, in, I mean, IRL is a term <laughs> used on Twitch for like being live out in the world. But um, this was literally live. I was, I was, I was, this was happening and I was interacting with the chat as it was happening. It was literally live. This wasn't recorded and then uploaded later. Um, font awesome, solid wind. This could work. If we just pick up, actually, um, feather icons might have a, I don't know if they'll have a wind, but let's see. They do. I like it. I'm going to use it. Um, copy. Outer HTML. Uh, so the software that I use is called OBS, Open Broadcast Studio. And it lets you add what are known as uh, browser overlays. Um, so you can literally give it a URL, and it just overlays that on top. So actually, this drop game right here, so if everyone just types, types drop me, uh, that's literally a web page running that allows it, allows it to be overlaid like that. Uh, yeah. So the idea is eventually I'll add this. I'll put it in the corner. Um, we're, we're, we're going to add like more animations and stuff to it as well. Um, call this the wind icon. Welcome in, Zelino. Glad to have you. Attributes need to be unique. Did this already have a class? Yeah, you could play the drop game, but it's not, it's like all local to the page, so it's not going to be in sync. There's no server side component keeping track of uh, like drop paths and locations. Is there. There it is. Nice. That's too big, though. We're going to go with 30%. Cool. And then this whole wind thing needs to center those two things together. Like, this icon needs to be... Um, should the wind icon be after the arrow? Or before the arrow? But I'm going to make wind a flex box. After wind, on top of. Uh, do I have the wind speed? Yeah, I do. So, um, I 
Rotate the wind icon? Oh, like instead of the arrow? I mean... Yeah, 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 why not? <laughs> why, why, why wouldn't I do that? Um... Right? Rotate both of them. So like... I like that. Yeah. So, uh, okay. 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 Bear with me. Bear with me. Um, we've got that. We've got that. I mean, technically if it's the wind, I think we need a, I think we need a separate wrapper div. That's just my gut feeling. And if we throw those properties back on there instead, um, like this, and then put both the SVG and the icon inside. What we're going to need to do is rot rotate the SVG separate from the container so that the SVG is pointing down. Um, uh, we'll, we'll fix everything else in a second. Actually, like if we just remove the uh, transform. Um, wind direction. Display inline block. Transform origin center. Um, we're gonna do inline flex to make it a flex box. So they should now they should be side by side. Um, Let's see what we got going on here. Yeah, so wind direction is the two. Great. Now, let's rotate this wind icon so that it matches the, the rotation of the, um, uh, the direction. So if I do transform, rotate, uh, it's pointing that way 45 degrees. So if I want it to point down, 90 degrees. That makes sense. So now they're both pointing down. I want them to be side by side and like roughly the same size. And then wind um, needs to take up 100%. So we've got wind. Right now there's no real time location. Right now it's just gonna be put the location in before I go. And uh, Sully, thank you very much for that resub. Okay. Seems fine. At this point, if we put that back in, now they rotate together. You can see both the wind and the arrow pointed in the same direction. Yeah, someone recommended only the wind icon. We had some people that didn't like that. We're going to go with both for now. Um, this wind icon needs to be way bigger. I guess instead of percentage, I could go with vmin. So that way it's not of the parent, it's of the full viewport. Yeah. Sort of. <laughs> Well, the issue is if I use an emoji, it's going to be different on every operating system. Okay, why is one on top of the other, though? Um, if we don't rotate them, let me just get them lined up before we before we rotate them. Yeah, so I need these two lined up. Wind direction. Is it a flex box? It's not. Well, I mean, it is, but I need to justify content center and align item center to get. Let's see. 
you know, and make it better tailwind. No, no, it's, it's easy enough without tailwind. Um, why is there so much extra space? Let align items start, flex start, flex in. That's better. Use an arrow SVG instead of an emoji. That could work too. Um, we need to find feather icons for an arrow. And we want arrow down, this one. And welcome in, Arden. Thank you for that, right? Um, we are building a weather overlay. Here it is. Uh, right now, <laughs> we're working out the wind, the wind, and how it how it should look. Um, yeah, thank you for that raid. What were you working on? Uh, React Web three with ETH and uh, Solidity. Very cool. Welcome in, raiders. Um, this thing I'm building specifically is a weather overlay for the IRL streams that I've been doing. Um, so people can see what the weather is where I am. All right. Instead of um, that thing, we want this. And instead of that, we want this. And it's not wind icon. This is arrow icon. Welcome back, Drills. Glad to have you. Um, the main issue is it has the same width and height, but um, isn't transformed. That's it. That looks good to me. And now, now that we have those two, if we rotate them together, it should be rotated... Um, No, I didn't. It'll, they'll be rotated in the right direction that the wind is actually going. Yeah, Svelte is, you could put it in the same category as React or Vue or Angular. Yeah, same category. Um, and then this gets put right there. And ta-da, they point the right direction. So right now the wind is blowing in that direction. Um, yeah, should we, should we make the arrow a little bit bigger or a little bit smaller, you're saying? Bigger, bigger. How about 18? Cool, but what we've done is we've made this UI work no matter the size, which is pretty cool. So whoever sets it as an overlay, it's gonna dynamically adjust the, the sizing. What did I ignore? So I don't cycle? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> what if the wind sat under the arrow, like a column instead of a row? It might be too... I mean, we'd have to lower the size. I think if we wanted to do that, we could set the flex direction to column. That, 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 didn't, that didn't do anything. I, I like them side by side, though. Yeah. Uh, no, no worries, Mordor. Like, we're figuring it out. The other thing I need to add is the um, uh, the speed the wind is going. So, um, current weather dot um, wind speed dot miles per hour. Is that how you write miles per hour? <laughs> or do people prefer MPH? What just happened? All I did was add one little element. What did I... I'll do, I'll do MPH. 
Uh, not not yet, SQL Gorcher. So that's that's going to be a future thing that I build. But basically, I'll need some kind of thing running on my phone um, that uh, constantly updates my my heading and my location that could then feed into this. Right now, it's just going to be set before I go out because I'll know like where I'm going to be walking. Yeah. Um, I probably just need a separate div. We'll call this uh, wind wind speed. I'm just looking so wind doesn't get rotated. It's just the parent. Oh, it's because of the decimal. <laughs> Okay, uh, at this point, we definitely should, uh, we should round it. Um, so, what's tricky is, this might be undefined, and, and then if this is undefined, then this is, this is nan. Um, all right, here we go. We're going to do it up here instead. So, if this is a thing then I want the full calculation. Otherwise, not available. And if we got the full calculation, I can trust that the result of this will be a number, which means I can call two fixed on it. Um, I, don't, I don't even need, never mind. I don't even need a decimal. Let's just math.floor it. Don't need that. And then um, this is now a number or a string. Yeah, I don't think I need decimals on, I probably don't even need decimals on the on the temperature. I guess you would, well, you all tell me, in Celsius, do you prefer the decimal? Because the, the decimal in Celsius can actually like, you can, it, it means something. The decimal in Fahrenheit, the numbers are so far apart that it doesn't mean as much. Need one decimal for for temperature, but um, honestly, all of these can be const. I don't know why I didn't have them as const to begin with. Celsius one decimal. Okay. Um, now let's create a variable for kilometers per hour, where we where we do the same thing. Um, so if this has a value, then we're going to, uh, math.floor this whole thing. Otherwise this is not available. I'm going to put that after because then, because you see 11 MPH and like 11 MPH, what? 11 MPH wind wind units, <laughs> and I'll, I'll decrease the. Uh, um, let's let's bring the size of all of this down. So let's decrease this to like 12. Wait, what was it before? Minus three, 15. And then um, wind speed, did I add that? I didn't. This will have a font size of like six Vmin. I like that better. Um, however, let's make these icons this, the size of this. We're gonna, we're gonna go even smaller. Um, I'm not cycling yet. We're figuring out the UI, and then cycling should be pretty easy, easy after we figure it out. Um, we need a little bit of space. Margin left. That. 
uh, the spell file is uh, it's a co think of it as a component. Literally, all of all of this is defined, including the images, is defined in the uh, in the Svelte file. So, uh, a component is like a little section of the UI. Um, this app literally only has one component. It, it is just this one Svelte file. But uh, when you're building a website, you might have a lot of different components. Like this might be the uh, leaderboard component, and then this would be the chat component, and then this would be the chat item component, but each one of those would like be in its own uh, Svelte file. But Svelte also, if you, if you don't even know that, that is a, um, a framework for building UIs. It's this thing. Uh, right there. Uh, I mentioned that this might be Svelte files. Uh, Twitch is actually built with React. But React also has the idea of components. They're just written in a slightly different way. Um, but you could do a similar thing where each file like is a little piece of the UI. Thanks, Falk. Is this the one that we're using? Yeah, it is. I really wish their name wasn't so long. <laughs> it's it's going to like mess with their UI to put their name. I'll do this based on uh, data from Met Norway. This is what we'll do. So it's like a gigantic sentence as a credit. Like it's bigger than the UI itself. Uh, we'll put it right here. Credit. Uh, we'll make it small. Um, and we'll make it italic. Look at that. We'll go a little bit smaller. Put it in the center. Nice. Give it a little bit of margin. Push it down. Um, there we go. And light gray. <laughs> also, I need to come up with a color palette. Color transparent. <laughs> um, no, I mean, we're literally getting this weather data for free. We should let people know where it came from. Um, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Let's try it. Color. Hashtag. It looks no different. <laughs> I can't tell the difference. Yeah, so that's what we need to we need to handle. If this overlay is on a dark background, like technically, actually, I want to change all of this. So this actually needs to be um, uh, probably white text with a black border around it. And I didn't even think about that. That's technically what we want those these little weather icons to be as well. Though we should be able to handle that where fill is none and then stroke is... Um, well, if we did fill white and stroke black... Fill white, stroke black. How does that affect our icons? It doesn't. I think the stroke is too big on them. Uh, coolers. Coolers is the color page I like to use. So usually what I, what all I, I like to do is like generate a color palette. So uh, one thing you can do is like pick, pick a color. So if you press space bar, that's going to like generate random colors. Then if you find a color that you like, you can lock it in. Like this. So if I lock that in, now all the colors it generates will be complementary to that color. Oh, you didn't see, but I clicked. I clicked the little lock button. Here's like, oh, I like that green. And then, oh, that that raisin black fits. Like, oh, that's a cool one. That's a look at that. Now I have myself a nice color palette with complementary colors. Um, though I don't think we really even need to choose any colors because we're, we're just going to. Um, yeah, that would be unfortunate, wouldn't it, wouldn't it, Fozzie? If if these were. Um, yeah, Torifone, you're very welcome. Thanks for being here. Uh, 
It's literally just a path. I guess a path... My mic is a little, I can, I can go like right there. Um, check. Maybe that's a little better. I do have uh, subtitles on too. If you click the settings wheel on, um, 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 Twitch. Whoa, Mark with the SVG skills. Okay. Well, Here's the thing, um, Mark, if you could, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know how easy it is. <laughs> could you make it so that the icon is filled with white and has a black outline? Um, yeah, well, I appreciate that click and thank you for being here. But yeah, uh, X, we, C, S, go. Um, that's something that, w that we're working on here, but you can, uh, First of all, you can set your team badge. You see, like, um, actually, I have no idea what that team is, but uh, Fob has Lorevel. Uh, Drills has Discord. Is that Blender? Uh, MD Super has Blender. So you can, if you go to the uh, brand cheat sheet here, you can find one of the brands that you want to set um, or simple icons. So you can pick pick a thing. And then you have Typo. I have no idea what that is. <laughs> The other thing is you can set your country flag. So um, the easiest way to do it is just your two-character country code. So for me, that's U.S. But if you live in a specific province or uh, city, we have those flags too. So if you go to this GitHub repo, basically if you find your country folder and you go in and you see a province, then you can set that as your flag as well. So I have... Um, U.S. is the country, CO is the state, and then Denver is the city that I'm in. And because it exists in this repo, I can set my flag to be the Denver flag, uh, which is this. Check this wind icon. Okay. Um, uh, so basically, if you go to this repo, find your flag, just copy the, the path and then use that in, as the command. Where, where's, where's the wind? Oh, it's literally like a location indicator. I see. Eh. Eh. Yeah. Oh no, I've, 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 I've always been in the U.S. I mean, when I was a kid, I lived in some other countries. Um, but yeah, I've been in Denver for about six years. I mean, there's a lot of people from Canada that watch me, so maybe that's why you thought I was from Canada. Wind? Wind? Okay, I don't know if I got an answer from Mark. Mark said I can try. All right. Do your best. No sweat. Um, let's finish up this UI. Let's round these decimal places. So... Um, for Fahrenheit, um, we don't need a decimal place. Great. For Celsius, um, I guess, oh, here's the other issue. If the temperature is zero, this is going to say not available. Um, Mm. Drop the decimal for C. Okay. Okay. The reason I'm hesitating is like this gets complicated because basically I, I want to set it to NA if it is undefined. So I, really I got to do something like this. If this is not equal to undefined, then we math.floor it to drop the decimal. Otherwise, set it to 
uh, in A, like that. Because if it's zero, technically that's falsy, and then that would have set it to not available. Um, we'll do that, and that drops the decimal. Use question mark, question mark, question mark. <laughs> but it's not, that, that's null coalescing, right? This, is, this wouldn't be null, this would be undefined. Would that work? Yes, anyway. Wouldn't that work? Well, but the other issue is I, I need to pass it into math.floor, and I don't want to pass it into math.floor without checking first, because if I pass it into math.floor, that will return nan, and I don't think nan behaves correctly with the double question mark, right? Right? Undefined counts, but does nan count? Because that's also what I'm worried about. Because I can't pass it into math.floor until I know that it's not um, undefined. Right? 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 I mean, the thing is, I don't. I know that this code will work. Why would I want to try something else? Um, seems fine. All right. So we drop the decimal there. Um, now, just for, for kicks, let's see what this would look like with um, nan isn't equal to, yeah, but you have, yeah, you have to use object is, but that, that wouldn't necessarily work with the double, um, um, double question mark. And then this becomes, kilometers per hour Look at that for all you Europeans out there that's what that's what the weather's like right now <clears throat> Good call random <laughs> I was like Whoop what okay um, also, I think I just need to get rid of the um, fill. Yeah, for now, anyways. Okay, what's the easiest way to do? Um, what's the easiest way to do? Kilos per hour? Yeah, <laughs> like a weight, and that's funny. Um, what's the easiest way to do text with an outline? Um, text shadow? Yeah, that's the current temp where I am. That's, that's, that's real. That's real right now. Yeah, that's what we're going to do next, Pete Pal, is this will, we will do a cool animation, like it'll slide out or fade out. Uh, I just wanted to see what it would look like. Easiest not found. <laughs> okay. CSS text outline. Honestly, uh, there's a chat overlay that I, that I was using. Was it called like JChat? Yeah, this is the one. I want to see how they do it because it looks really good. Um... So, oh, they use Noto Sans. Mm, should we switch our font to Noto Sans? Maybe that's what I was thinking of when I thought when I pulled out uh, Open Sans. Um, yeah. So if I do a medium stroke and a medium shadow for coding garden, um, just say something in chat. See, look at that. That's that's what that's what I want because um, um, it look it looks really good. It looks really good, com like uh, contrasted against any background. So, let's see how they're styling it. They have a text shadow and a text stroke. Cool, cool. So. Um, 
on this whole thing. We'll just set the color to white and the text shadow to that. And then also um, WebKit text stroke. It works for the 19, um, but we need everything to have a color of white. We'll just get rid of this info class. And then this is so small that it, that it can't, <laughs> it just can't. Um, yeah. Well, I'm using Firefox right now, so the WebKit text stroke wouldn't even apply to it. Welcome in, Balan. Welcome in. Yeah, we're using the uh, Met Norway. Okay, so we have a chat line. We have user info. Yeah, all of them have like the same, the same thing. Well, we, we, we spent a while trying to find a weather API and Met Norway was easiest to use and didn't require an API key. So, okay. Um, it looks like it's working. It doesn't look as good though. Why does theirs look so good? You know what? It's the font. It's the font. This font that they're using or that I chose looks way better um, then my, I'm going to switch my font to Noto Sans. Um, font source.org is where we found this. Um, I guess we can see, yeah, it's a chunkier font. They just have uh, Noto Sans JP. What is Noto Sans JP? Oh, with Japanese support. Do we need that? <laughs> is that what that is? Um, yeah, I have no idea either. There's a bunch of different Noto Sans. Um, there's all of these. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. It, it has Japanese support. Um, we don't need that. I mean, honest, honestly, if we want other people to use this overlay, then uh, we kind of want to support all languages. But, okay, we'll just do the JP one. So I'm going to uninstall um, this one. Open Sans. Now we're going to add Noto Sans JP. Um, instead of importing Open Sans, we'll import uh, Noto Sans. And then in my app CSS, we'll set it to Noto Sans. I mean, it still doesn't look as good. <laughs> I don't know why. Mark Woods did it? You can infinitely rotate the sun icon. Oh, that would be cool. That would give it a little bit more lively, like liveliness. But um, yeah, if there's ever clouds, then it wouldn't make, it doesn't make as much sense. Yeah, I'm going to push this code to GitHub. How do I find free to use APIs? I just search the web. I mean, we spent a good 30 minutes trying to find a good one, good API for this. Uh, is it bold? Let's see if they set it to bold. I think it is bold, isn't it? Font weight 800, that's the key. That's the key. Or not? Did we did we change the font weight? 
um, in here. Yeah, temperature, font weight 800. It just doesn't look as good. Why doesn't it look as good as theirs? Um, text is much larger than chat. That's that's a possibility. Also, this isn't like horrible. It's just not as readable when the the stroke is on um, smaller text. So when we make this text smaller for wind speed, we should reduce this. Like that. Cool. And then same thing for the credit. I haven't looked at Next.js 13, no. Should they be vmins? Yeah, you're totally right. Um, let's see. Um, it's not the same as a pixel, though. Well, we might have to adjust these. a bit too much. <laughs> um, also, wait, did they have, did, did Mark have uh, CSS classes? No. So this needs to be, um, wind icon. Arrow wind icon. You got it? Okay, so we don't even need to worry about that. We, we got the, this is the one. Heck yeah. Thank you, Mark Boots. This is it. You got it. Well, yeah, well, I was just trying to use the one that they had already made at, at, at least, but now that they have this, we can pass in, uh, so this is the arrow wind icon and then um, stroke black fill white um, the other thing is I really need to adjust this like great we can increase the stroke width but yeah that looks awesome uh we need to keep messing around <laughs> we're messing around with this um we can just do it in the dev tools uh here oh that's what that does okay Oh, the text stroke is working. WebKit text stroke is working in Firefox for whatever reason. Um, so this is the thing that's actually providing the, the stroke. Okay. But what that means is if we get smaller, the stroke gets smaller, which is great. That's what we want. 
Um, now we need to find the right stroke size for this text here. Zero point one. Zero point two. This is it. There's a bit more shadow on the wind speed. Man, it just doesn't look good when it's small. Tailwind unironically makes this trivial. <laughs> well, um, okay. Okay. 0.15. Did I try that? We'll see what it looks like in an overlay too. Um, but yeah, we're going to drop that down to 0.15. And then the shadow will drop down as well. Okay. It's doable. Now on that SVG, can we in increase the stroke width? We can. More. Yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah, that is a fun fact. So negative 40 is where Fahrenheit and Celsius line up. Um, that's perfect. Look at that, first try. Oh, never mind. It's in pixels instead of <laughs> vmin. Um, someone asked, "Why am I using Norway weather? They provide weather for for all around the all around the world." Um, and they don't require an API key, and they don't have any rate limiting. So that's the main reason we, we chose them. Eh, it looks fine. All right, let's see what this looks like as an overlay right now. Um, Oh, I need to restart uh, my, my Vite build with uh, host. There we go. It's ugly. Well, the thing is, it's on a black background right now, but if it's ever on anything else like, like this, um, I don't like it. <laughs> I really don't like it. Yeah, I think so. I okay. I was all about the idea of like a text outline, but this it just kind of breaks down depending on the size. Um, yeah, the text just does not look good with an outline. So what we need to do then is we need to provide uh, a background. So let's let's do that. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna get rid of all. Of, I mean, I did a lot of work on the text shadow and stroke and everything, but we just we just we just can't have that. So we're going to go back to this. Now, uh, way more visible. That's great. <laughs> That's a good first step. Next, we should add uh, like a, uh, somebody mentioned earlier, um, Alka mentioned, oh, and hello, Alka. Welcome in. Uh, Boulder text. We are, we have, we're at uh, 800 um, uh, font weight. But I mean, this looks good to me. But we just really need to add a like a, a ba like a what is it called? Like a, a a 
snow? <laughs> like, um, let's try. Uh, backdrop filter blur. One wren? What's a wren? Silhouette? I'm just thinking of like fr frost, frosted glass. That's what I'm thinking of. Frosted glass. Um, Yeah, like that. That's a good... A rim is nothing. Did you mean rim? <laughs> you did, because look at that. Uh, now it's completely black. Um, okay, but what other options do I have? Because, I mean, what I could do here is say, like, background um, color... I guess what we also could do is we could like position a div behind the main div um, and then give it, yeah, this div. Uh, Mr. Zerny, thank you very much for the two months. It's always a pleasure to visit your stream. Well, thank, thanks for being here. Um, this div, this div we can give a class and a background to. Um, this one. Actually, if we give this a class of container and then we put a div here that's a class of background, we can we can put it position it behind everything. Um so container will have position relative and then uh, background will have position uh, absolute uh, with a width of 100% and a height of 100%. So it'll take up the full container parent um, with a top of zero and a left of zero. But now if we set that background to have a, uh, you can't see the code. I'm uh, sorry, you can't see the code. I didn't realize you can't see the code, but uh, here, here. Um, If we set this uh, background color to like an RGBA of um, that should be white, white and a half like that. That's what I was thinking. Um, now we can't see anything. Uh, but we, we it, it, oh, it needs to be underneath everything. We could set the Z index, or we could just put it first. If we put it first, then it will be underneath everything. Yeah. Or not. Uh, but Z index should do it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we're, we're, we're closer. This is... Um, This is closer to what we would expect. We, we need to work on the spacing. Like, there needs to be less space here and there, but uh, this is good. Yeah, so padding of the container uh, should give a, give a little bit of room there. Um, two rim? Yeah, like that. Mm -hmm. um, if we give this a uh, border radius, 10 pixels. It's a little rounded, 20 pixels, okay. Um, and then if we do the backdrop filter blur on this, now it's not see-through at all. <laughs> um, did I do too many pixels? Yeah, I think there might be like a compositing issue with a background filter blur. Border radius, 25%. 
That's a whole lot. I kind of like it as pixels. Oh, if so, what, what you're saying is if, if we want background transparent, background. Mm -mm. I think this is an, an overlay issue. It doesn't doesn't like it doesn't know how to blur it with like like the compositing because this is literally like a Chromium instance running inside of uh, OBS. The one looks bolder than the nine. It's possible. <laughs> Let's change it back to uh, miles per hour and Fahrenheit. Um, To me, as a gosh darn American, MPH makes more sense, not M slash H. Yeah, it's, my, it's miles per hour. <laughs> um, okay. I This looks better. I, I'm still not the biggest fan of it. We could decrease the opacity like that. Um, but this is what we have to worry about. Like, if it's on a back black background... Is it legible? And it's it's kind of not. Um, hmm. Hmm. Make it all SVG. Test it on yesterday's stream VOD. You know what? That's not a horrible idea. <laughs> let's, let's literally go to the... Uh, let's go to my IRL channel. Okay. Um, yeah. So vmin has to do with the... Um, uh, the view pit, view, <laughs> the viewport width and height. So, uh, uh, you can't, you actually can't see it right now, but the, the container for the, so when I put it in the corner here, there's actually a box surrounding this. And so that is the viewport width and height. Um, I think right now it's like 800 by 800. So one V min would be one of the minimum unit between the width and the height. In this case, because they're both 800, it's 800 by 800, and I think one vmin is actually, would map to one pixel. But when you have a different screen size, now one vmin um, uh, is relative to that, I guess. That was not a good description, but let's just show yesterday's IRL stream. It's not horrible. That's what it would look like. We, I mean, we would animate it in and out. I guess the other thing is, um, uh, I probably would put it like more in the corner like that. Pretend I'm walking. <laughs> yeah, uh, go there if you want more description of uh, V-Men. V um. Oh, a black background with white text? Um, not opposed to that. For whatever reason, to, to me, that looks infinitely better.
Yeah, yeah. We need to fix the spacing around the image, but I, I think it looks better. I think it looks better. I agree. Okay. We also could even increase the background a little bit to like 0.7. That that changed everything. <laughs> like instantly it was like, it went from like a, man, who designed this? To like, ah, decent. Decent. Okay. Um, let's work on spacing. And then uh, we'll be done with this version of, of it. So right now, um, there's the symbol container. We then have temperature, which has just a bunch of space around it. Um, I don't think that is, uh, where can I see the box model? There. Yeah, it's literally just the element. I think it's the line height is what I need to change here. Um, It's true, Mark. We don't we don't need that line anymore. Can you send me the uh, um, can you send me the code pen that doesn't? Oh, here it is. Here's the one without the outline. Well, we thank you for doing we doing it. We we appreciate your sacrifice, and we value you as a member of the coding carding community. <laughs> um, Wind uh, arrow wind icon, I think is what it was called. Yeah, there we go. Um, okay, what was I saying? I think this literally just needs a line height. Yeah. I think that's it. We d we're not toggling between uh, Celsius and Fahrenheit yet. We'll have to do that next. Uh, oh, that's setting the line height of everything. I just want to set the line height of the temperature. Great. That's better. Um, The image actually does have a little bit of padding on it. I guess if I add negative margin to the symbol container to uh, this, if I add negative margin, will that reduce? Um, we also need to push the uh, the wind icon down a little bit. So that is the class wind. Um, and we'll just give it a margin top of one vmin. Three vmin. Like that. Cool. I, it's, a good, it's a good thing to think about uh, recent online because it's possible that those other images... Um, do take up. Well, that's a thing we didn't think about. <laughs> the moon at night is almost the same color as the background. Uh, uh, well, it's different enough. It's different enough, yeah. Um, let me figure out, let me find uh, some of the bigger icons so like fog looks like it'll take up a little bit more space let's see what happens if it's fog yeah because then uh, now it's too close to the lettering so um i'm gonna get rid of that negative margin and then I think I could add some negative top margin though. 
Because it is, like, really way far away from the, the top. Like that. And then, um, what about this? Give it some negative margin too? Test it with an icon that takes full height. Which one? Well, I guess the one with rain and sun. Sleet, showers, and thunder. I picked the one that they, they I'm pretty sure they said it in the documentation. Yeah. So it actually is, there's an extra S. I don't want to write the code to handle that. So we're actually just going to get rid of the alt text on, on this image. Wait, didn't I have an alt text? Yeah, this, we're just going to get rid of that. Um, Oh, do I need underscore day? Maybe you're right. And then also now that negative margin makes that look even worse. I think if we will reduce the padding and that should, that should fix it. That's back there. But now this uh, container needs one less padding. Right, we're gonna separate it out and do it accordingly. Um, so left and right, I think can be a little bit more like that. And then <laughs> I know you can combine it into a single one, um, but I want them all to be a little bit different. Like that. See, it's beautiful. I think like technically you can do it as like, you can do padding, but I always forget the order, but it's like top left or top right. Uh, bottom left. That This would do it too, but this just looks so cryptic to me. Um, it's, it's so much more readable if you do it this way. Yeah. Cool. All right. Based on data from Met Norway, we're going to remove that font weight. Instantly looks better. Cool. Missing the timestamp of the value. Oh, it's fine. Um, we're going to add code that gets the latest information like once every hour or every 10 minutes. Like th this, uh, obviously this is the value when the page loaded, but we are still going to um, refresh this every minute or so. Now I know like their API uh, may not have been updated within the last hour or whatever, but um, this is... Technically, it's under instant for this specific time, if that makes sense. It's their timestamp. It's good enough. It's good enough. Top right, bottom left. <laughs> um, this looks cool, though. So uh, let's let's look at it one more time on on this. Um, I'm happy with that. I can I can uh, adjust it too. Like there ish. Ha <laughs> ha. 
Um, half size the font of the Fahrenheit. I agree with that. Now show us a night and rainy video. Um, sure. Not rainy, but not. The, oh, I guess I did that IRL. That IRL stream was on um, uh, the Coding Garden channel, the one where I went to. Um, uh, downtown, downtown Denver, and it was at night. It looks all right. I, I don't hate it. I don't hate it. <laughs> my gimbal died, so I'm literally just holding my phone right now. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. We've been coding for almost four hours, and this is all we got. I think it's fine. This is this is totally fine. Okay. Okay. Um, we're going to reduce the size of this... I guess we already have an info class. Did I get rid of the CSS for it? I think I did. Um, frosted glass. That's what we were looking for earlier. But I, I think I like where we landed, where it has a dark background with white text, because that looks like it's going to it's gonna work better across things. Um, across <laughs> more stuffs. OK. Um, we have an info class, and it will have a font size of 15 vmin. Well, that broke the whole UI. Um, basically, this one does not need the info class. Sound sync? Did it really break? Maybe there's too many overlays happening. Seashells, seashells by the seashore. Uh, I don't know the, about that, Zachary. The, the only issue with that is we would have to calculate it. So we would have to take the degrees and then convert that to northeast, south, or west, because the API doesn't give that to us. It's good? OK, thank you, everybody. Um, all right. How's that? Yeah, we, we can't really, I mean, we, we could get rid of this text, but then we would be in violation of the use of this API, and it's really the least we could do because we are using their data. Um, what does 108 Fahrenheit look like right there? It's a good question. <laughs> let's, uh, let's fake it. Um, eh, not bad. Not bad. It's not horrible. <laughs> it looks, it looks good. Too much space between the digits and the unit. Okay, so you want to decrease that space right there? Um. If the F was a bit higher up, yeah, like we could uh, like vertically center the text, but 
Why is the background lighter on the overlay than the browser window? Because um, in the browser window, it's just it's a it has opacity, but with opacity with a completely white background. But when it's running as the browser overlay, it's opacity with whatever is behind actually behind it. Um, so. Oh, reduce the line height again? Good call. Good call. Good call. Um, okay. Oh, yeah. I don't know then, Fuzzy. Um, Alka is saying just blame, blame it on OBS. Okay, uh, <laughs> I missed a lot of chats, but I think what we want to do is we want to decrease the size of this space. Is that what we're saying? So really what we should do is... Um, uh, I'm going to change this to unit because there is no... There's no nothing else is using uh, um, info. But now I can do like margin left one vmin. We can control the spacing there. Yeah. Two vmin. Three vmin? 2.5 vmin. Huh? Huh? <laughs> Is that how it was before? <laughs> uh, uh, can someone post the link to the what what vmin is? But it's essentially the minimum unit uh, from either the viewport width or the viewport height, because um, basically we have completely dynamic sizing. So when we're down here, the spacing is relative. In this case, it would be relative to the height, because that's the minimum unit. Because it's the window right now is larger than it is wide. Um, so. With vmin, everything is relative to the minimum of the width and the height. The percentage of the smallest between height and width. Yeah. Um, does the overlay in OBS have opacity less than one applied? Let's see. Yeah, it does. Like it does have some um, CSS that it was setting. But yeah, it's it's still lighter. <laughs> so I, I don't know. Okay. How large is the backseat? You mean like backseat coding? <laughs> it's really big. There's there's 100 people sitting in the backseat telling me what to do, but it's okay. I, uh, I appreciate all the input. At this point, it looks pretty good. Will the wind look okay if it's pointing to the right? Okay, let's figure out what we would need to do to make it point right. If we do 270... Um, and uh, Timbo Tio, thank you very much for that sub. Looks good to me. We're having an ad, by the way. <laughs> we have an ad command. We also have an acknowledge ad command. Um... Okay, what are the other nitpicks of the UI? <laughs> what, what, it's a bus. It's backseat coding where literally everyone on the bus is yelling at the driver. Uh, shadow on the weather icon. That could be nice. Um, can you just can you just add like a drop shadow on an SVG? Um, oh no, it's an image even. Hmm. I don't even know what the CSS property is. Is it uh, border sh shadow? Filter drop shadow. And then one pixel? 
10 pixels? I, I, I honestly don't know the... Um... XY blur. Okay, uh, X, Y, blur. Um, oh no, why, why is this happening? Okay, X, Y, blur, black. That's cool. I think we're good. And honestly, <laughs> oh, OBS will struggle with it. Yeah, let's see what it looks like in OBS. Um, honestly, Oh, good call. Instead of pixels, we should do beadmen. Also, this says it's 1080p, but it looks pixelated. Maybe that's maybe that's just me. Maybe I need to change my encoding settings. It looks like it's working, right? I'm happy with that. <laughs> it looks good. Um, okay. Uh, we tried back backdrop filter, but oh, like the fact that it's an over oh, overlay, o OBS does not like that. It just removes all opacity for whatever reason. Um. Wait, does the width of the container change based on the number of digits? Because if it does, we need to fix that. It does. Okay, what is this width? We'll make this the fixed. The three-digit width is the maximum it will ever be. So this, is, this has a width of... 341 and a height of 400. So I think we're just going to hard code. Well, not hard code. It needs to be relative to the thing. But um, all right, let's mess around with uh, that now. Cool. Wait, why isn't that centered? I guess I probably just need text align center. I don't think I can do height auto because it's not. Oh, well, if I just remove height, is that what you mean? Yeah. Okay. So we only need a, a to set the width. And then um, do I just need to do this text align center? And so the container will have a width of 54 feet. Cool. So now if the uh, the temperature is like that, the overlay stays the same size. That's what we want to see. Um, and I guess we'll make it 55 just, just to be clear. Okay. 
Um, an old school rapper. Thank you for that prime sub. I think I missed that. Appreciate you. Uh, dear, degree Celsius, we dropped the decimal for. Or, or no, we... What did we do? I think we rounded to one decimal place. No, we dropped the decimal. We dropped the decimal. Oh, like negative. Okay, yeah. What happens if it's negative? I honestly I like the unit being down down below like that. But what if it's negative fifty degrees Celsius? Looks fine. <laughs> Cool. All right. Uh, somebody give me your exact location. <laughs> don't, no, okay. I'm sorry. I, I don't give me your exact. Somebody give me a latitude longitude. I'll plug it in here and it will see. We'll see what the weather's like in the rest of the world. I don't know why I just spit. I don't know why I just laughed at my own joke. Uh, please pass in a latitude longitude. Thank you. Thank you. Um, if you could post it in query parameter format like this, uh, it's gonna make it a whole lot easier for me. Um, oh, that looks cool. Except now there's like no spacing around the image. Um, we really do, like I really can't have a line height. Like it kind of needs to be like that, so okay. We'll do uh, 20 vmin on the line height. And then is this margin that we could probably just get rid of? Yeah, we can just get straight up get rid of the margin on the wind. Um, cool. All right. Um, Eric is here. Let's see what it looks like for them. Negative six degrees Fahrenheit. Where is that? <laughs> well, you don't have to tell me where, but um, that's cold. Play with Fez is over here. Cool. Nighttime and cloudy. Uh, Mark Boots. Alberta. Okay. I could see it. Um, I've been to Alberta and it was negative 55 degrees Fahrenheit, which at that point is almost the same as negative 55 Celsius. Um, looks fine. I, I'm not happy with the spacing between the image, but like we're, we're basically at the whim of, uh, at the whim of the images that we have loaded. Is that true, Xweed? Um, CSGO? Let me, let me. I, I, I want to do it right, but. Um, Credit? Thank you. <laughs> I was like, I don't know where it is. Um, but I'm missing, a, I'm missing a lot of these, but uh, I copied that one. Let's see the weather for, for J-Mode. And also, you all can tell me, I mean, I've pulled up several different weather examples. Does it seem accurate? I guess I'm showing it in Fahrenheit, so you probably have no idea. Also, this is fascinating. <laughs> it's blowing towards the northwest at zero miles an hour that's funny yeah well I, I, yeah so we, we're gonna we need to swap between temperature units um yeah okay um yeah 
<sighs> what happens when we're out of bounds? Oh, nothing. I think uh, it'll probably just... Well, we'll see. We'll see if the API returns an error, and then we are ha technically handling the error. But let's see. Uh, something breaks. Uh, so it's a cores error, but that's just because they don't have their error handler set up for cores correctly. <laughs> so um, this this is like the number like one of the biggest reasons that backend developers complain about cores and that they don't understand about cores. But essentially, what's happening is the there is no pre-flight request. It's a, it's a, it immediately goes to an error when they technically should have that pre-flight cores header even for er error status codes. Um, which is doable. It just needs to be set up that way. But apparently we can't even make the request there because um, you see it's a 400 bad request, but it doesn't include the cores errors. Show. That's a thing. Yeah, that's what we want to do eventually. So, uh, especially for my stream, like there's people from the U.S., there's people from um, uh, uh, Europe. <laughs> Basically, there's people that use Fahrenheit, and then there's a lot more people that use Celsius. So, for my stream, I want it to rotate between the two. So, um, I don't think I'm going to do it today because I've already been live for four hours, but we'll add it in the future. For now, I think it's good enough that it just displays Fahrenheit. In the future, we will add um, a animation, so it's gonna like uh, like rotate between Fahrenheit and Celsius and miles per hour and kilometers per hour. Yeah, if we want city name, then we would need a, like a reverse geolocation API where we can pass the coordinates and it gives us back a name. I don't know if there's any free APIs that do it, do that. Weather looks pretty accurate. Cool, cool. It wasn't actually cores. Yeah, that's see, that's the issue. Like, I was seeing a cores error in the browser, but the issue is the server responded with an error, and in 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 their backend code, their error handlers don't add the cores headers like all of the other handlers. So, yeah. Some weather. Yeah, yeah. This one doesn't. This one just literally just gives you. I don't think it does anyways. It doesn't give you like name of location. Oh, we, yeah, we could do a card flip animation. That'd be cool. Like, doo doo. The other thing is, like, I kind of want it to. Um... All right, this is this. This is the last thing I'm gonna do. This is essentially going to um, appear for thirty seconds, then disappear for thirty seconds, and then reappear for thirty seconds. That's that's what the last thing that I'm, that I'm going to add. Um, show. This container will have a style binding to opacity. Um, oh, I guess this is the point where we could use the fade. We could use the fade animation here. Okay, that's the whole point. Point we um, we chose Svelte is so that way we can use their animation features. Oh, I want to keep that open. Um, Yeah, I mean, there's nothing in here that says put the um, um, put the credit in the repo. Yeah. Okay. Well, didn't mean to do that. Ooh, I like fly in. Let's try it. So uh, we're going to import um, the animation from Svelte Transition. And then on the element, we're going to add it. 
Uh, no flip right now. Right now, it's just uh, only Fahrenheit, and it only shows every 30 seconds. Um, so on this container, um, Y 200. I want, like, X. I want, to I want it to float in from the left. And we'll do, like, negative 600. Um, let's see. Oh, that's slick. <laughs> it was that easy. It was that easy. Cool. Um, do we do we have a transition out? Oh, it does. It automatically flies in and out. Okay, so if I were to add another variable that's like let uh, weather visible starts off as true. Um. And if current weather and weather is visible, then every 30 seconds, um, we toggle it. Um, for now, I'll do it every two seconds, just so it's easy to, easy to see. So every two seconds, uh, that is equal to not that. Flip it. Uh, well, equals not that. <laughs> equals not that. Um, cool, cool. But the other thing we can do um, is the next time we show it, get the weather again. Um, And then let's throw this into a function with, uh, instead of doing a set interval, we'll do a set timeout. So this will be a function um, uh, get latest and show. And then um, Um, this will then set a timeout for 30 seconds. So in 30 seconds, um, actually, we only want to get the weather if weather visible is true. So if the weather is not currently visible, that means we're going to make it visible, which means we need to wait on the weather. But if the weather will no longer be visible, then we don't get the current weather. And we'll do that every two seconds. Um, cool. And then now, uh, when the page loads, instead of calling git um, current weather, we'll so call git latest and show so that it calls itself later, and we'll default this to false. So that way, when the page loads, sets it to true, gets the latest, and then... Um, we should see, yeah, so every time it, it comes into view, it makes an API request. So we see that API request happening every time it comes into view. And the way I'm going to set it up, it's, it's not going to be every two seconds. It'll be every, we could probably do every 30 seconds. And that way we're getting the latest weather every 30 seconds. Um, yeah, I mean, and technically, like, we're pounding their API right now. We don't want to do that. So now, um, this will show the weather for 30 seconds and then disappear for 30 seconds and then reappear after 30 seconds. Um, you could use this one. Free client-side reverse geocoding. Free forever. Cool. Cool. I had no idea this existed. I'll save it for later. I, I don't want to do it right now, but yeah. I missed what It's Me Delano said. Oh, here it is. 
only fit between 5 and 19 degrees, and then apply the opacity with the current tempest value, then it should make a sound based on wind. <laughs> okay, I get it. I get it. <laughs> the wind arrow rotating to the new position? Um, that could be cool, but that sounds difficult. Um... Yeah, so I'll I'll show you basically what will what will happen um, for the IRL stream. Actually, I think I have a uh, an instance of um, yeah. So it it disappeared and it'll come back, but I have my local OBS where I can show an example of this. So basically, what's happening is. Um, Let's see if this is right. Cool. So, um, OBS is frozen. Give it a second. Uh, this OBS is running on my computer at home. And then um, my phone is sending a video stream back to my computer at home. So um, let me set up the connection. Um, and so now this video is happening. This is literally my my office and, and <laughs> happening right now. So um, basically, um, my, my phone is sending the signal back to OBS, which means now inside of OBS, I can add that as an, as an overlay. So if I go in here and add a browser source, call this weather, um, and then set the uh, API, or set the, um, the URL to be this. Um, uh, now we have that, that little weather overlay I mean, I probably want to do this so it's easier to position. Am I sure? Oh, Discord is just in the mods channel. It's nothing crazy. So yeah, I could set it like that. Um, uh, so if if the stream ever goes down, you actually will still see the overlay because the overlay is running inside of OBS. Um, that's, that's how all of this will go together. Cause the issue is if I had the overlay running on my phone, then anytime I have like packet loss or I lose signal, then all, all of the overlays would be gone as well. So basically, uh, all of the overlays are running inside of OBS. Um, so that regardless of if a video feed is coming in, you'll always see those, see those overlays. Yeah. And so this is using, um, the protocol called SRT, which is secure, reliable transport. Um, and you can see all the apps and stuff I use here. So I'm just using my phone. It's running Larix Broadcaster. So this is the thing that's sending the video signal. And then I, I'm receiving that video signal inside of OBS. And then on one of my, uh, machines in my server rack, I have SRT live server running. So yeah, somebody asked, is it running all the time? Yeah, it is. I could shut it down if I wanted to, but it doesn't take up a lot of resources. So SRT Live Server is always just sitting there waiting to take in the video stream. Uh, and actually, I'm not using Loopy SRT Stats Monitor anymore. I'm using uh, the thing that I built, uh, which is really good at detecting packet loss. I'll show you an example um, over on my personal channel, which is where I do the... Uh, 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 live stream, the IRL streaming. So this is an IRL stream I did yesterday, but yeah, so basically everything is offloaded to my computer at home so that if I have a bad, like that, so you see how it's saying weak signal and it's like jumping around. Um, if my phone was going directly to Twitch, that could potentially bring the entire stream down. So what happens is you either see this like weak signal. So my, this is my bot is kicking in. It's like, Oh, I detected packet loss. And it's, it's usually, it looks like really trippy. You'll see it. Uh, and sometimes like, it, yeah, like this, and then it jumps frames. So like it's jumping back to like when I, where I was before, but my bot detected that. 
uh, added that that thing. But another thing you'll see is um, if it completely disconnects, then it will automatically um, go to the be right back screen. That's another thing that it does. Um, so. Um, there's one point during the stream yesterday where I, I was going to attempt to like plug my or stream my laptop screen. So I was like, all right, I'll, I'll be back. I'll, I'm going to go down and I'll be back in a second. Um, and my computer back at home automatically switched to this scene. So basically at this point, my phone is no longer connected and no longer streaming. But everyone watching my channel now sees this this be right back screen. So I can figure out the stuff that I'm doing. And then finally, when I click go live again, my bot detects that I'm live and then um, auto switches the scenes. Let's see. <laughs> we aren't doing so good right now, CJ. Says Oscar. Yeah, so you can see, basically I click start streaming on my phone, my computer at home, the bot running detects it and then um, knows that it needs to uh, switch to this scene. Yeah, and then that, that other, the, the clips that you were seeing, um, oh man, that camera angle does not look good. <laughs> so this was the camera that was plugged into my laptop. But yeah, the ones in the TV are just old clips that, that'll keep you entertained while I'm gone. Um, but all of that to say, like all of, all of this stuff, these are like custom overlays in OBS, like custom text, like an image. So the weather thingy is going to just be there like all of these other overlays. Yeah, and so basically, um, I'll have to find what I'm using, but someone built a, an overlay where you point it at a channel and it just pulls random clips from that channel. Uh, it shows all clips on the channel. Yeah, so if somebody were to clip during the live stream, it could potentially show that one. Yeah. So you could, you could figure that out, Neon Dactyl. So the way I've written it, I'm only looking at one. Oh, this is <laughs> somebody like drove by and just like screamed at the top of their lungs on that clip. But the, the way I have things set up is just looking at a single video feed. So my, my bot, um, the settings on it are um, literally just it's only looking at one. I could update my bot to look at multiple and that's how some uh, live stream IRL streams do it. They can take multiple video feeds in. Um, and they could do like picture in picture, or uh, if one goes down, switch to the other, that kind of thing. And Harry Bow, thank you for that prime. Appreciate you. Love your streams and videos. Learned a lot from you. You're a great teacher. Oh, thanks. Um, all right, are we done? <laughs> are, we, are we done with this with this weather overlay? It 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 shows up every thirty seconds. Do we think thirty seconds is too long to? Um, uh, to show the weather overlay? I think it is. Vertically align the digits? Yeah, it's too long. Let's figure out a better way to do this. So if the weather isn't visible, then we're going to get the latest data and set it to true. Otherwise, we hide the weather Uh, and show it again in 30 seconds. But if we just showed the weather, we want to hide it in 10 seconds. That's that's the winner there. Like this. So uh, when the page loads, it'll show it for 10 seconds. And now it should hide for 30 seconds, and then it'll be back for 10 seconds. <laughs> I'm now hitting the API every 40 seconds. Yeah. I guess I could have a... Uh, that was a long 10 seconds. I agree with that. <laughs> and I kind of agree with... Uh, somebody said it, but this... Sh Let's not show it again for another minute. Yeah, and then um, we could cache it here in this API function. So um, just have something like last fetch date. 
and that's null. So, um, and then uh, last result, which is either a weather result or null. Um, starts off as null. And last fetch date is either a date or null. Starts off as null. And um, if if and when there is a last result and the last fetch date is less than, uh, we'll figure this out, date dot now. We want to get the weather every hour. So 60 minutes times 60 seconds times 1,000. So this is one hour in milliseconds. Um, and I guess I could just make, it doesn't need to be a date, it could be a number. So if the last time we fetched is greater than right now is, if the last time we fetched is less than an hour ago, is greater than an hour ago, is less than an hour ago, then just return uh, the last result. I guess. <laughs> so, well, I'll, I'll adjust that in a second. Um, and then right here, we can, whenever we get it, we'll assign last result, we'll return last result, and before returning it, we'll say last fetch date is date dot now. Like that. Um, so, yeah, we could do, we could do ten minutes, cause that yeah. 10 minutes is fine. If the last fetch date is less than an hour ago, or less than 10 minutes ago, return the last result. But if the last fetch date is greater than 10 minutes ago, then we get the result again. And then a chat command that could uh, refresh it. We'll add that to the backlog. <laughs> yeah, there are quite a few Neon Dactyl. So um, I know of uh, Tej Dev. Um, or Tej DV. Does anybody know his name? Is that how you spell it? Yeah, this is him. <laughs> but uh, he works on uh, NeoVim. Uh, so he does a lot of open source development on that. Um, you can check out the Live Coders, which is a, a stream team uh, that I'm a part of that, that all do uh, live coding. Uh, some people are working on, like, yeah, like big open source projects. Some people are just writing apps and stuff. But if you go to this team page, you can see who's live. And you can also... I don't know if it's broken for. Oh, there we go. Yeah, you should you should have gotten a. Well, the page is broken right now. There should there should be a scroll bar right here, where you can see all of the um, um, uh, people on the team and and see if they're live. There's some other groups like the Poggrammers. Uh, maybe they're not a group anymore. Spelled like that. Yeah, check them out over here. And then, um, does anyone remember the name of the, the team that uh, White Panther is a part of? Something, something, Claws. <laughs> yeah, the Claw, there it is. <laughs> uh, this has a bunch of live coders as well. So definitely check out those. Um, there are likely uh, more that are, I mean, there, there are, there are more that are not on those teams. So definitely just cruise this category or peruse this category. Um, but yeah, yeah, you're welcome. Um, I will say you can also check out uh, science. So first of all, we're in, I mean, obviously you're here, so maybe you already know about software and game development, but there is also science and technology and science and technology used to be where all of the live coders streamed. So 
um, you might find some coders over there too, like uh, like George Hotz. Um, he's he's famous for being the first to jailbreak the iPhone. He also like jailbroke the PlayStation Two or something like that. I don't know the history, but uh, he's working on like open source AI stuff. Um, all that to say, you'll you'll find some live coders over in science and tech as well. Yeah, yeah, and see you later, Mark. Okay. Um, did I did I do it? Did I do everything? Somebody mentioned that maybe my logic is wrong. You'll find some ducks over there on uh, uh, science and tech as well. But technically, you'll find ducks on on my IRL streams too if I go to a park. Um, okay. If now is greater than last fetch plus time added. That could be easier to reason about. Let's see, plat, plat, not prep. So, if right now is after does this mean the same thing? Yeah, yeah, this is it, right? This would always be true. Okay, if cache stat plus cache length is greater than now, that's what I have. <laughs> I'm just gonna assume that it works. I don't know. <laughs> um, what were you trying to embed, Alka? Cached at, which is last fetch date, plus the cache length. And then now is less than. So the moment now is greater than, we need to refetch. That's it. We got it. <laughs> I always, I always uh, uh, struggle with with the maths there. Cool. So yeah, now we're caching the API. So we're not we're not pounding the API. I mean, honestly, let's test it. Let's test it. So we're gonna do our. Um, um, Cache time. We'll put that in a variable. So right now we have it at 10 minutes, but if we set it to uh, 30 seconds and um, over here we refresh the overlay um, every 10 seconds. We can test it out. So we see one API request. <clears throat> and then after 10 seconds, it'll disappear. And then when it reappears, we should not see an API request, which means it's using the cached, cached data. Well, that, uh, what was our cache time? <laughs> I don't even remember now. Our cache time is 30 seconds. That ain't right then. It shouldn't have done that. Yeah, okay. So uh, what Alka is saying is we need to flip this sign. All right. Honestly, we, I mean, we can, can make this like literally one second. Yeah, but the fact that it's not requesting the data is great. But <laughs> in 30 seconds, it will request the data. If hidden, but the conditions change, it should show up. I'm not worried about that because it really is just like slightly informative, like every now and then. Oh, there we go. It made it made the request. Though it did pull it from. So that's the other cool thing is their API is smart enough to just. Re I mean, it, it's setting a cache header. Like if we look at their response. 
Um, this does not expire until 30 minutes. We have 30 minutes before uh, we get new data, basically. Okay. Um, show the weather on the screen for 10 seconds. Don't show it again for another minute. And then, um, so then we'll set this to 30 minutes because their API doesn't even update data for every, uh, unless it's been 30 minutes past. I think we've got it. I changed the wrong number? <laughs> did, did I though? No, uh... Yes, you're right. 30 minutes. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what 10 times 30 was. 30 minutes, because this, this would be one hour. This would be 30 minutes. Um, and this says, show the weather and then hide it in 10 seconds. And then show the weather again in one minute. When you're right, you're right. Okay, this is it. This is the app. Um, I am going to build it. And then uh, we'll deploy it. Surprisingly, weather dash overlay dot surge dot sh was not taken. Great. <laughs> it's mine now. <laughs> um, Though, uh, it's not showing the error. That's okay, though. <laughs> cool overlay. <laughs> Flip between units? I'm not, not today, not today, because this took me almost five hours <laughs> to write. I, I'm a, <laughs> I've done this for a living before, and this took me almost a full work day to do. This would typically not take me a full work day. Um, show a form <laughs> allocation. Yeah, that's what we need to do. Look here. Um, we'll go ahead and add like a like a to do and like a and all that good stuff here in the README. Um, It's a whole lot of README, and it doesn't even tell people how to start the app. npm install npm run dev. Um, Uh, because with GitHub pages, I I don't know if you can point it at a folder or I would have had, have had to have created a separate branch. It's slightly more complicated to set up. Um, oh, that's a good that's a good call, Limeotes. Every do like thirty five minutes, something like that. Yeah, I wouldn't be opposed to that. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to make a pull request, um, an overlay that shows the current weather. Of a given latitude and longitude. To do uh, switch between Fahrenheit and Celsius. Honestly, I wrote about a, a big a whole a whole a big old to do of all the things that I want to be configurable, like text, background color. You could set it so that it's only Celsius or it's only Fahrenheit, or you could set to switch between the two. Um, so we want a settings slash customization 
slash URL generator page that has all of these settings that you can set. Um, we also want um, animation to switch between the two. We also want uh, uh, length seconds number of sec number of seconds to stay on screen a uh, number of seconds between showing on screen yeah um That, that would be good, Elka. Uh, we'll put that in the to-do as well. Um, use cache header from API response to determine when to make next request. And uh, not going to tell my name. Thank you for the thank you for the tip. Appreciate that. Um, use cache header from the API response to determine when to make next request. Cool. Did I miss anything in this to-do? This is good enough. Um, form to set location. Yeah, that'll be in the settings as well. Um, temperature units for, um, no, that's temperature units. And then uh, wind units, we want a similar customization. Wind speed units. Um, Latitude, longitude. Curse Hill. Uh, and thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for the five dollars not going to tell my name. That's that's six dollars total. Appreciate that. Um thank you. Um Dark mode, I think that's going to come down to the user setting their background color and their font color. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, right now, latitude, longitude are the only required params. Oh, yeah, showing the time. <laughs> Sh show the time. I'm not doing that right now. Okay, I'll push this to GitHub, um, and then... Uh, I won't do it right now, but if you if you want to look at it later today or tomorrow or whenever, github.com slash coding garden. It should be one of the most recent repos once I get it uploaded there. Um, why not take the coordinates dynamically? Uh, because the way things are set up. So like right now, my streaming computer is here at home in the same city that I'm streaming in. But technically, I could go stream in New York City and I would want my overlay to show New York City information, not. Colorado information, which is where my OBS is running. Does that make sense? Uh, I'm not sure, Ryan. I mean, we could think about ways to <laughs> not have that text there because, I mean, that text is a little, um, uh, it takes away from the, 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 the nice, clean, clean weather info. Um, but at the same time, we're getting, they're giving us the data for free, so I, I don't mind showing it. I mean, technically in the settings, we could have, a, I guess, like a toggle for that, but yeah. Oh, thank you, Titan. Yeah, I think that's definitely what we'll do. So basically, when you hit the landing page, if you didn't specify any params, we're going to give you a customization form that generates the URL that you can then use as an overlay. I didn't look at this. Um, and just because it's public doesn't mean <laughs> it's completely free. Because Open Weather Map is probably one of the best, but uh, they do have a, um, a rate limit on how often you can request. Yeah. I mean, the nice thing is um, we kind of have written this in a data adapter kind of, or like an API adapter way, if you could call it that. 
Anybody know design patterns? What have we done here? We're calling the API and then we're reformatting the response into this object here. So we could swap out the API, but as long as we pass back the object in this format, our UI will continue working. So if we want to swap out the API, we could, we could figure that out at some point. Yeah. What's the pop-up when I click on links? It's something that I built. It's, it's just a little, like it literally, uh, it runs on a, I think it's a serverless function, but it requests the info of the URL to make sure that it's legit. Because sometimes people send me bad links and then this will tell me what the actual info is before I actually click on it. So, um, okay. Um, yeah, I think we're good, we're good. <laughs> like I said, check the GitHub if you wanna see it. And then also one, one last shout out to my personal channel. Um, I always, I always have the best of intentions. I wanted to build the weather overlay here and then immediately go live stream and use that overlay, but I'm tuckered out. I've been, I've been live for almost five hours. I don't think I'm gonna do an IRL stream today, but hopefully I can do one tomorrow. Hopefully. Yeah, I think I'll keep the Q&A stream to like a minimum and I'll do, I'll do, I'll do a stream over here tomorrow, but uh, follow over here if you're interested in seeing uh, me walk around Denver. Um, there's another park that I want to go to. So that's probably the next place that I'll, that I'll stream at. Yeah. I've considered short form tutorials. Honestly, uh, everything just feels like work. <laughs> so that's why I haven't done a lot of my course that I've been working on. So yeah, thank you, Delano. Thank you for being here. Yeah, and we, we did like a tiny version of that um, yesterday. I was literally on a dock on a lake and uh, people were just asking me questions and I, I was answering them. Thanks for streaming three hours past your scheduled allotment. Well, thank you, Murdoch, for, for being here. And thank you for thanking me. And thanks again to uh, the person that didn't reveal their username, but they did give me money and I appreciate that. Thank you everybody today for all the, the subs and resubs. Um, a few uh, first time subs, appreciate that. Welcome in. Glad to have you. Welcome to the Coding Garden. Uh, we got ourselves a Discord if you want to join the conversation over there. And if you if you had a code-related question today that I didn't get to, if you ask on the Discord, we'll 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 do our best to answer. Um, and what's up, uh, uh, USMC chick? Uh, you're in a coding boot camp. Could this overlay be used for other purposes? Sure. Yeah. It's it's really uh, just a matter of. Um, yeah, what you want to do with it. So, like, I specifically am using OBS and am loading it there, but... Thanks again, CJ. <laughs> thank you for thank you for the tip again, not going to tell my name. I appreciate you. Um, but, yeah, you're, you, you, you can use this literally for whatever you want. I mean, you, and once I push it to GitHub, you're also welcome to take the code and change it up to do whatever you want as well. Um, so, yeah, all right, I'm going to head out. Uh, check, it, check out the schedule. So I'll be live tomorrow. Um, when you visit this link, it should show you in your time zone when I'm going to be live tomorrow. But tomorrow is a Q&A stream. So the plan is to just show up and answer any questions you got. All righty. Um, there's some raid messages over here. And thank you, Carlos. Thanks for being here. Uh, here is the message. If you're a sub, if you're not a sub, you can use this message. You can also come up with your own raid message. <sighs> Let's get out of here. This overlay takes a while to catch up or it's completely broken. <laughs> I don't know, wherever you are in the world, have a wonderful morning, afternoon, evening, or night. And until next time, here's this.